Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. Genesis chapter 17. As it is, our culture here, every first service of the year, we take our time to just open up the prophetic word given to us. May I remind us again that the prophetic words that we bring by the Spirit, they are not just human concoction to keep you know the pressure on leadership to make sure that you have to bring a word i was sharing with the leaders that if god did not say anything would we'll just continue the last thing he said hallelujah and sometimes i know that we can make a lot of ritual out of these things so there's all kinds of pressure on the man of god what is god saying and then sometimes we just scout through all the things we believe he had said in time past and look for what our ministry has not captured we have not done open heavens oh yeah let this year be but next year is open, you know all of that and then you find out that what you claim god said does not come to pass because he's only committed to defending what he really said hallelujah and we thank god for the hearing ear and the seeing eye genesis chapter 17 the year of extraordinary fruitfulness verse 6 and i will make thee exceeding fruitful and i will make nations of thee and kings shall come out of thee we're reading to eight and i will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after in their generation for an everlasting covenant to be a god unto thee and to thy seed after thee the last verse and i will give unto thee and unto the seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger all the land of canaan for an everlasting possession and i will be their god hallelujah god directs people by making a commitment through his word god's word is his bond and he commits himself to you by giving you a word the word of god is a representation of his integrity upon your life hallelujah it's important for us to understand this that when god's word comes to you then you have an assurance a token of certainty that he surely will deliver as spoken his hand will always follow where his word goes you can find where the hand of God is moving by knowing where his word is going. Hallelujah. There's no point guessing where the power of God is. Wherever the word of God, the light, the illumination that comes from his word, that place according to scripture is the hiding place of his power. So you can know where God's power is. If God says, I am the Lord that healed thee, then you can know where the power of the Lord is channeled and you can know what dimension of operation he wants to bring and birth. So when God gave this word, for me, I think I spent a whole day just praying and crying this revelation. You know, many times, even us men of God, sometimes we can be victims 
of the tradition it's good to think about the people a good shepherd lays down his life but many times we don't take out time to believe what god said ourselves hallelujah i took out time and prayed my life out on this word because i believe for myself i believe for the ministry and my assignment is to guide you by the spirit tonight to connect truly with what god is saying not just to be aware that he said it hallelujah god lives in the realm of eternity please follow me tonight but his operation with men is fragmented into times and seasons are we together now god is not limited by times and seasons he dwells in the realm of eternity but according to his wisdom and his system of operation the earth is governed by the mystery of times and seasons are we together now so the program of god is spaced between times and seasons and the holy spirit is mandated to supply the grace the illumination the empowerment that is required to maximize seasons so the moment the word of god is released the holy spirit now begins to hover around that word and then by extension upon whoever receives that word if you do not receive the word you do not qualify for the hovering of the spirit he doesn't have any bias to an individual he's following the word so you invite him by receiving the word you don't just invite him by coming it is the spirit and the bride so if you reject the word then you will cannot attract his presence with respect to his dealings in a season is god speaking to us tonight so we must receive his word and then the holy spirit comes to energize that word to give you the capacity all the equippings required to make that word true it's not new to us in this ministry we have learned again and again that just because god said something does not guarantee that it will happen correct it says forever O lord thy word is settled not in your life it is settled in heaven it will take you engaging the relevant mysteries of the kingdom to make it in earth as it is in heaven are we together now and so it says i will make you exceeding fruitful i will cause nations to come out of you he says kings will come out of your loins blessed be the name of the lord we'll just walk through a few scriptures and then i'll begin to explain give us some instructions and we pray tonight blessed be the name of the lord genesis chapter 35 please and verse 11 from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same we give you From the rising I want you to look at that scripture and God said unto him I am God Almighty so you are not confused who is speaking to you and the power that backs him he says I am God Almighty then he says be fruitful hmm. be fruitful and multiply a nation and a company of nation shall be of thee then he says and kings Kabbalah, shall come out of your loins remember psalm 112 says blessed is the man that feareth the lord that delighted greatly in his commands he said his seed part of the principles of dominion is that your seed must reproduce and replicate you you cannot dominate just with your mind alone you must dominate with your seed you must bring something out of you to reproduce your result this is what confirms dominion so it is in the glory of the saints that the christ is glorified if the saints do not rise in glory then the christ cannot be glorified are we together now it is in the victory of the son that the father is glorified then the saints in partnership with the holy spirit bring glory to the son 
are we together now then the dominion of the church over creation principalities and powers is where the glory of the church lies i am god be fruitful be fruitful not a suggestion be fruitful two more scriptures Psalm 1 and verse 3 popular but powerful scripture Psalms chapter 1 and verse 3 the Bible says and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season and his leaf also shall not wither and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper he shall be he's trying to paint the picture of a kind of man that god is describing and he's saying that man will be in the similitude of a tree that is planted by the rivers of water you know sometimes when you study the bible try to understand what god is saying he didn't say by that is planted by the rivers he said the rivers of water then he says that he brings forth his fruit in season and his leaf does not wither and so whatever he does prospers one more scripture john chapter 15 and verse 8 just give us king james if we can have amplified that would be fine john 15 and verse 8 now this scripture is very powerful the bible says when you bear or produce much fruit my father is honored and glorified so there's no point being confused as to how god is glorified it says when you bear much fruit my father is honored and glorified and you show and prove yourselves to be true followers so fruitfulness is a demonstration is a validation that you were truly mentored by god is proof that you are part of him are we together now king james says hearing is my father glorified hearing this is how the father is glorified when you bear much fruit and he says by so doing so shall ye be my disciples Blessed be the name of the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8. Paul was teaching on the principle of sowing and reaping. And then he said something. He says, and God is able to make how many? That means grace is in dimensions. The Bible didn't say God is able to make grace. All grace. There are different kinds of graces and I've defined for you what grace is. Grace is not just limited to, you know, unmerited access and all of that. Grace like love has dimensions. I define grace as every good and perfect gift that comes from above. Every possibility given to the saints that is only routed in Christ is called grace. So anointing is grace. Are we together now? victory is grace wisdom is grace grace is like the spiritual warehouse that hosts every tool every arsenal that has been stored for the victory of the saints and the bible says there are different kinds of graces wisdom is a grace the anointing is a grace intuition is a grace creativity is a grace and the bible says on account of god's desire to make you fruitful he can coordinate all grace that means that god looks at your life and finds out the dimensions of his grace that must be captured in your life for the result he said you produce to be produced and that in his wisdom he is able to make all grace abound the word abound here means to make it within your reach God is able to make all grace abound towards you so that you always having sufficiency 
the word sufficiency here is not just abundance of resources alone that means that you are not limited in anything as far as your assignment or your productivity is concerned and then he says that you having sufficiency in all things may abound the goal is to produce good works but the bible says the system is that god will have to assist you so fruitfulness is not something that is just a product of your initiative you have to be assisted by god and the bible says one of the ways that god assists us is that by his intelligence he scans through your life and finds out what dimensions the graces that are not yet there and god is able to make all grace favor is grace he can make that grace abound towards you intelligence is grace divine direction is grace and God is able to make all grace to make all grace to make all grace like instruct them favor go and meet pastor alpha God is able to make he knows that if that dimension of grace is not in your life it will make him look like a liar so he puts pressure on his own integrity and commands that dimension of grace to find a way of colliding with you jesus and god is able to make all grace abound towards you so that ye having all sufficiency he says in all things may abound to every good work i believe this for my life all grace so it's no surprise if someone cannot sleep because of me and wakes up in the morning and says i don't know why i was thinking about you i know what is happening in the spirit god is making all grace he's coordinating the tools the possibilities that must be featured in my life all grace If he means him to silence a wicked man somewhere in the village he can make all grace that is grace too judgment is grace because it has the ability to make the word of god come to pass in your life god is able to make all grace so he looks at you at a man of god and knows that there are certain testimonies you need in your ministry for certain people to call your attention so he makes all grace he will direct that grace he knows that for as long as you recycle a particular dimension of testimonies, you will not call on the attention of kings. So he will supply that grace. All grace. He can delay your destiny helper because you were delayed. He will punish another man to make sure you must meet in time. All grace. That is called mercy. All grace. You were supposed to run fast but you slowed down then god makes another man to slow down to wait for you because you have to meet all grace believe what i'm telling you now my brothers and my sisters whoever receives this privilege from god is a sign and a wonder you will look at such lives and marvel God is able to make all grace. God gave me a revelation of this scripture in my time of retreat and I didn't know what to do with myself again. To make all grace. All grace. I sit down and I discern that you are thirsty. And whoever has water within your vicinity is in trouble because one man is thirsty. I make sure all water find the way, whether it's from a well, whether it's from rain, whether it's from a factory producing water i know you need water so i will coordinate grace is a force it can make things come to you if god knows you need the ministry of men he will make all grace all grace they will come to you and wonder why they are there you, you will know they didn't bring themselves all grace if God sees that the level you are stepping into, there is a dimension of consistent prayer contact that you must make to allow your spirit build capacity. In a strange way, without your requesting it, a kind of fire will land on you. It's not something that you will try to do. It will so quicken you, you will wake up and pray non-stop like a madman. He's making all grace. Because what he's about to give you, he vets your capacity and sees that you are you are not yet built to hold it so he makes all grace 
and you find out that all through february all his dealings with you is around prayer and fasting and you say god what are you doing it is still all grace because you who cannot fast two days without tasting something you are now going three days dry complete dry i don't mean breaking in the night it's not your human making he's making all grace and by the third day he comes to you and said this is why i put the fast there is a new oil there is a new wine i was shedding off the old wine skin so you can carry something that cannot be disproved we give you god the highest praise from the rising of the sun Mm. We give you say the highest praise from the rising of the sun to the One more time. We give you God the highest praise. you had you had the testimony of the gentleman here that an angel can stand up and give you a number all grace he found out that every man he instructed to honor you disobeyed and he said no not even men will stop me if they will not praise me i can raise stones 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 let me tell you it's a fearful thing when god becomes desperate over a man it's a fearful thing to say that the jealousy of god becomes directed towards a man clear the way for that man because there is nothing you can do in time that can interrupt listen listen i want you to get this i'm showing you the implications of receiving a prophetic word the holy ghost is not looking for a man the holy ghost is following where the word is so if you receive the word you attract his attention and once he comes that place where the word has been received becomes the center of his activity until the word achieves what it came to do all grace all grace all grace all grace all grace no matter how he would do it he, if it means him overturning all grace must reach you there's something in biology called trophic movements remember we were taught something like that there's geotrophism there's phototrophism it's a system by which plants insist until they grow so if you bend a plant in a way and it needs sunlight it will find a way to squeeze itself until it receives that light if you close it how many of you have seen trees break fence by the root because they need to spread they were not designed to be confined and whoever made a mistake and put a fence on it it will keep quiet like it will shift it until you see the fence cracking how forcible are right words they will push every barrier until the word of God prevails so if God has told you man of God this is your season of appearing I tell you forget about whoever likes you or doesn't like you is a joke when his hand rests upon you he will station all your destiny helpers in a meeting where he will so lavishly anoint you when your enemies testify of God upon your life, you have won. You have won. Because the testimony of your enemies is more believable than that of your friends. Their enmity validates the truthfulness of what they are saying. I don't like this pastor, but my God, I saw it by myself. This is the hand of God. Look at the scripture again. And then we'll deal with a few things and God is able God is able if God were not able then I'll be afraid because how will the grace come it's one thing to tell me a possibility but the Bible says God is able let me tell you what it means to be able to be able means to be capable to be able means it is within your jurisdiction ah, within your jurisdiction if I have 10 naira 
and i see a little search of pure water i am able to buy it the resource to make it happen is there is that true if i have a company for instance and i see a young man who is a graduate and trusting god for a job i am able able means it is within your ability so let's go now he says it is within god's ability to make all grace it is within god's ability to bring the anointing it is within god's ability to open you up to a strange dimension of visions and dreams it is within god's ability to manipulate the loyalty of men towards you god is able to make all grace not grace all grace abound towards you that means that the next time you see strange things happening you will not act ignorant again the next time you find out that you wanted to go in the morning and a visitor delayed you and now that you are coming out you meet someone you've been trying to meet you have an interpretation to that coincidence all grace walking by the spirit of wisdom god has decided to channel his jealousy towards us this year like never before and then declaring that we be fruitful it will be wicked he says he says when i send thee lackest thou anything in other words i cannot send you without equipping you god does not equip you by giving you money he doesn't equip you just by giving no 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 he equips you by giving you something supernatural that will begin to manipulate men to your own wonder why are you helping me and the person says honestly if i had the answer and then you know there is a reason why do you want to buy chairs for my church don't you have a pastor to say I, I i i can't explain why and you know all grace all grace being channeled towards you please sit down so by the spirit of the living god and by the illumination of god's word we know that he's bringing us into a season of extreme productivity he's bringing us to a season of influence he's bringing us to a season of increase he's bringing us to a season of unusual results what does it mean to have extraordinary fruitfulness it means to establish territorial dominion through unusual consistent and ever increasing results to establish territorial dominion through unusual consistent ever increasing results what does it mean to be fruitful to be fruitful means to expand to break borders to venture into virgin horizons dimensions never thought possible give us Colossians chapter 1 please and then verse 9 and 10 Colossians 1 9 and 10 very powerful scripture it says for this cause we also since the day we heard of it do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye be filled with the knowledge of his will and in all wisdom and spiritual understanding 10 that ye may walk worthy of the lord unto all pleasing being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of god being fruitful in every good work fruitfulness is a time of a mighty manifestation of supernatural results in every area every area mighty manifestation of supernatural results fruitfulness also entails a time of restoration a time of restoration until the spirit be poured upon us from on high he says 32 and verse 15 isaiah then he says that the desert land be counted for 
a fruitful vine and a fruitful vine for a forest until the spirit be poured upon us from on high it's a time of restoration extraordinary fruitfulness entails a time of great favor great favor one of the evident graces that should be at work in the saints when God declares fruitfulness let's look at the keys very quickly for every door we desire open in the spirit there are keys I'm going to give us two keys tonight very quickly that will control are experiencing extraordinary fruitfulness number one the first key is embracing the ministry of the word please write it down embracing the ministry of the word my brothers and my sisters we are living in times where your neglecting the word will be to your own peril it's not only a prerequisite for your spiritual advancement but it will translate to your success in general the bible likens the word to water are we together now and biology teaches us i hope i'm right forgive me if i'm not but i think i am that the human body contains over 70 percent of water that is the condition among other things for a man to be said to be healthy and alive so if a body leaves because of the abundance of the water in it and that even our own earth as an ecosystem survives because of the abundance of water two-thirds of the world being covered with water then imagine a life without water that's exactly what happens to a spirit without the word. I know a little bit about what the absence of water can do in a human body. It can cause shock and can even kill the person. So when there is no, that water of the word is not at work in you, there is a deficiency. A system was designed in man to detect thirst. And I think they tell us, medical people tell us that by the time you really feel testy, your body has already been frustrated demanding water. Is that true? That you shouldn't have to wait until the body gets that thirsty. The ministry of the word. And you know, many times when we say the word of God, many believers just oh yeah yeah you mean scriptures no 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 the word of god is not just a vague compendium of letters for us to cram and quote and recite like a charm for victory no no we must understand what the word of god is i told you that the word of god is a compendium of god's methodology the word of god is a compendium of his system of operation so by the time the Bible says that the word of God dwells in you richly, it means that you come into a full comprehension of God's ways of doing things, that you be enlightened, illumination by the Spirit granted unto you, that you will know, know, not awareness, fellowship with the mystery. The ministry of the word. Nobody in the kingdom ever bears fruit ignoring the word he will only bear fruit in season when he is planted by the rivers of water the rivers of the word you will yield your fruit in season and then your leaves will not wither he said meditate on these things give yourself wholly to them and then he says your profiting will appear unto all is God blessing us now please write this down there are three dimensions of the Word of God that we must embrace that is tied to fruitfulness number one according to Colossians chapter 1 please leave it there and verse 9 the first dimension of the Word of God that we need is the knowledge of his will the knowledge of his will the knowledge of his will number two the word of God as wisdom 
number three the word of god manifesting a spiritual understanding so the bible tells us that i desire that you be filled with these tripartite dimensions one the knowledge of his will that you understand the system of operation of god that you are able to discern his will through it hebrews chapter 1 says god who in sundry times and diverse manners spake to us by the fathers and through the prophets verse 2 says had in this last day spoken to us through his son the word which he has appointed to be heir of all things that his most valid instrument for discerning his will is his word it's important you cannot lay claims on the truth of God's word when you are in doubt if it is the will of God. That means that you need to search the scripture to find out, is it the will of God to prosper me? Is it the will of God to lift me? Is it the will of God to heal me? Is it the will of God for my ministry to flourish? Is it the will of God to cause me to become a voice over a territory? When you know the mystery of his will, then you can engage your faith and receive it. And then number two wisdom we need the wisdom of god the bible says every house is built through wisdom and by understanding it is established a house is not built through desire desire only gives you the fortitude to create an atmosphere for the spirit of wisdom to come it says through desire a man having separated himself seek it and intermeddled with all wisdom the desire brings about separation but it will take the word to administer wisdom listen the word of god is the wisest perspective of god concerning any issue the word of god presents the wisest perspective on all matters because there are times that you are in a straight between your intelligence and the word of god there are times you are in a straight between culture and the world. There are times you are in a straight between your instincts and the world. At that time, you will have the confidence to lean on the word of God as touching or as, as providing the wisest perspective. No man ever fails following the word. Listen, every time you are in doubt of the voice of God, let the word of God be his voice. Because even if an angel comes to preach another gospel that defies the integrity of the word, then let him be accursed. The ministry of the word. Many believers refuse the word. We want results. But the fortitude to be patient, to stay, to build, to know, it takes a lot of sacrifice. There is a spiritual labor to receive the word. That is the labor that the Bible enjoins that we have to enter our rest. Acts chapter 20, please. Quickly and verse 32. Acts chapter 20 and 32. It says, And now, brethren, I commend you to God and then to the word of His grace. The word that is able to cause all graces to come towards you. It says, which is able to build you up uh -huh, and then give you an inheritance. Notice the operation of the word. You are commended to the word and that the word operates first by building you up. The word does not just give you an inheritance. The word vets your capacity to receive that inheritance. And if you fall short of it, it first will build you up. Then deliver to you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. So you can know them that are sanctified by the inheritance they possess and demonstrate. And that the word of God is able to build you. Are we together now? The word is able to build you up. And to give you an inheritance. I think it's Galatians 4 that says for an heir. As long as he's a child. He says he differeth not from a slave. Though he be lord of all. So he is destined to walk in his inheritance. But the Bible says, provided he is a child, void of understanding, he differed not. The results does not show any difference between the child and the slave. But is under tutors and governors until the time appointed. So the word of God can wean us away from spiritual childishness and bring us into a point of maturity. And then as a reward, 
deliver to us our inheritance everybody say the word of God so you can see a weak person come Mike a weak person and standing as weak as he is and he's foolish enough to embrace the word of God are we together now the knowledge of his will the wisdom of God spiritual understanding the Bible says these forces begin to walk in him and suddenly it begins to build him up it builds him by transforming his mind recalibrating his understanding giving him God's perspective so he is now put in a position where he is able to rise above culture rise above the sociological context of men his viewpoint becomes the word of God and then the Bible says to prove to you that he stayed in the school of the spirit he is given an inheritance among the sanctified his ranking and he's given an opportunity to transit states and you see him and know that I used to know this guy but now what has happened he has been built and given something I think it was day before yesterday or yesterday I usually follow the news on channels they are online platform and i saw the president decorating i think the new inspector general of police and then i said this is it this is my message here for whatever reason you have been built then you are given something and with that comes new responsibilities privileges etc are we together now now what that man could not do whoever he is now he's able to do because he has been given something that's what the word of god does it takes you the way you are and begins to build you and the system of the word is that it builds from inside out this is where the carnal man cannot discern the things of the spirit because most people listen carefully most people seek to look at outward results very quickly and sometimes we try to manipulate the word by making results for ourselves in the out no it doesn't work that way there is a walking of the spirit within you and my brothers and my sisters when god perfects his work within you the evidence must show it will show in every area it will show in your ministry and all of that let me tell you something about spiritual realities if you have it you have it if it's not there once you are doubting is it really there it means it's not there or it's still on its way reaching you if it gets there then it will show it's true are we together now the word is able to build you that means one of the ways the devil is going to try to destroy you is to create whatever formula he can create to alienate you from contact with the word and you will be surprised that one of the ways the devil can distract you is even to give you a bible you will think just because you are holding a bible he gives you a word he can wrap you up in religion so that you are ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth you will continue to flatter yourself that just because your eyes continue to make contact with a a book produced by zondervan or white taker house you will mean that you are growing in the world he says ever learning he saw the scribes and said ye search the scriptures for in them you think you will find life and you will not come to me there are all kinds of ways the devil can distract us especially for we preachers because boy ministry can make you so busy and you will be searching the word but you are just looking for a sermon and you can array nice sermons and get all kinds of sermons you are instant as far as ministry is concerned but as a person the richness of the word is not in you and remember our spiritual fortification in this kingdom is the formidability of the word of god that you have meaning that if the word of god is not rich in and around you your life is at a risk when life pushes you it will have to take the word content in you to find expression are we together now when the word is not at work in you you are going to be frustrated and discouraged because my brothers and my sisters like pastor alpha was sharing we are at times where men are not just saying based on the world system there is a casting down um someone sent me a text about a funny way somebody stole a phone 
and i said he would have just begged they would have given him i mean why did you have to that's 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 what hunger does hunger can make women eat their children talk more of a fool when satan wants people to forget about god he manipulates their belly he manipulates the economy he heats up everything to make sure people forget about god are we together now but in the name of jesus it will be minus you some of you what god will do you even be afraid to testify because of the kind of anger around the people who are not in the mood to hear anything god has done so you have to just live and come and dance in the house of god because you will feel unfair because of the kind of testimony you have even you will feel sad for them not because you are being sarcastic you are wondering lord this is and he says you believed me and so you committed me but i know whom i have believed and i am persuaded that he is able persuaded that he is able John chapter 15 and verse 16. I was preparing this and the Lord gave me a powerful revelation. He said, the word ordains you to be fruitful. The word ordains you. Like you conduct an ordination service and you pour oil on a man and say from today, brother ABC, you have become pastor this or whatever you are. Are we together now? The Bible says the word can coordinate a an ordination ceremony an ordination is a system of authorization and that the word like a minister can ordain you into a realm it says ye have not chosen me but i have chosen you the word speaking and ordained you to go and bring fruit a beautiful sister here stood as tiny as she was i was just smiling at her a dear one who stood here that wonderful lady and she stood with her cabin crew license that's an ordination are we together yes if you try to harass her around an airport even if she's not employed yet she's able to tell you no 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 i'm a license this and that that means i have received the authorization because these gates are still there remember our old gates and so there is a license and he says i have ordained you i didn't just send you i ordained you ordained by the word where is your pass into the realm of increase and you bring the word god said i will make you exceedingly fruitful and the gate opens there you go and for someone he comes where where is your pass and he says i'm tired and the gate said turn around weariness is not a key for open doors it takes the word where is your path for a new level of the anointing then you say i will make you exceedingly fruitful that nations shall come out of you and kings out of your loins the word ordains it is true the word ordains let me indoctrinate you with this revelation get it ordained to bear fruit kabarako satire that means whatever you are involved in looks at you you come with a license ordained to bear fruit i'm a music minister ordained to bear fruit in the name of jesus that means there is a life-giving factor in your songs that must force them to reach the nations an ordination happened through the word ordained to bear fruit not ordained to talk stories not ordained to explain ordained to produce results men of god hear this the word of god is able to ordain you that you go and bring fruit not just go and get fruit to go and bring forth like a woman pregnant and then she brings forth something out of her a child so i can send you alone as weak as you are and say look at the multitudes that god is sending you to i may not have naira and kobo to give you but i commend you to the word of his grace and you feel weak in yourself you say look I, i'm unqualified and the word of god says hold on let me ordain you and the same way you know those days when they had, when they ordained anglican priests many things would happen those days we used to wear cassocks you know you wear the whole regalia from top it must touch the ground clean shoes well polished and all of that and you are so happy and um, they used to call us seminarians even the mass curates didn't flog us 
are we to yes we had masquerades that sometimes would come up to harass people we used to move in groups the masquerades will run around and dare not come near us because even the masquerade knows a priest from a that means that ordination creates immunity that satan is running helter skelter he comes to a house and sees you clothed with the word it's an ordination and they tell the demon go now i say you you come and go the word of god building fortification so don't be surprised when a thousand falls by your side and ten thousand by your right side it looks so close you are worried god says have you not heard that it shall not come nigh thy dwelling only will you stand and see watch the reward of the wicked ordained to be fruitful john 15 and verse 16 ordained to be fruitful ordained to be fruitful if this is all you get tonight is worth it that you can walk around knowing that this fruitfulness thing i'm not getting it illegitimately or illegally i am ordained so as a man of god you go for a meeting you expect people to be healed you expect people to be delivered you expect that there be an outpouring of the holy spirit you expect revelations and signs and wonders and the moment you stand there and say praise the lord and the demons are flying out and liberating people is a token of your ordination is proof that you came with the word you didn't send yourself sent by the word ordained to be fruitful if i'm a destiny helper to you and then i come and i was supposed to pass you because of the investment of the word upon you it has been ordained to make sure the graces come to you and that word will compel me to want to come and help you and support you thank you Mike. are we together now ordained to be fruitful ordained to be fruitful king of kings lord of lords mm. let your kingdom reign in my life adonai Adon the Lord Adonai Let your kingdom come It's our prayer Let your kingdom come Number two The second key is the ministry of the Holy Spirit not just the ministry of the spirit the ministry of the holy spirit the second key to being fruitful is engaging the ministry of the holy spirit zechariah chapter 4 and verse 6 popular but very powerful zechariah chapter 4 and verse 6 then he answered and spake unto me saying this is the word of the lord unto joshua selman saying hallelujah not by might otherwise some of us will not be strong enough nor by power but by not the spirit my spirit saith the lord the spirit of the lord the spirit of the lord that this fruitfulness will not be by might that this ministry exploits will not be by might are we together now by human empowerment not by power he says but by my spirit saith the lord but by my spirit this miracle will not happen by might nor by power the testimonies that many of let, let me tell you this let me tell you this truly speaking and i submit to you if you find your feet here then you must testify it's true it's a grace there's nothing to be angry about it's a grace we read there that god is able are we together now look at the gentleman that an angel called him gave him this if he didn't have a job you would think he's lying and he called the name of the place you can go and verify that the word comes 
and just like somebody wanting to steal from you the word continues to trail you until it surprises you you know how a thief follows you 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 think you are walking alone but a thief is following you to steal your phone this one is following you to make sure you are blessed did you not read in your bible that there are two spirits called goodness and mercy and that they can follow men They can follow you. Do you know, honestly, I, I pray that you believe what I'm saying. And my brothers and my sisters, you will sit back and wonder at life. And you will become an evangelist by force. Begging people to stop wasting their time and say, look, come, come. There is a fountain of living water. The way you are going about it is going to end you in frustration. Come, I have found. When you encounter the world, when you encounter the spirit, you must be a testifier. The woman said, come see a man. I know you are not interested, but I'm begging you. That's the reaction to a man who becomes marvelously helped by God. You become too grateful. You, the, the compassion burns in you. And you can wake your family members and say, Look, let's be tired of this state in this house. There is a way out. The ministry of the Spirit. Isaiah 48 and verse 16. It will always be the word and the spirit come near unto me look up please hear this I have not spoken in secret from the beginning from the time that it was there I am read with me the remaining part one to go and now the Lord God uh -huh, and his spirit had sent me so how were you sent the word and the spirit the lord god and his spirit had sent me the lord god his integrity and the spirit had sent me the lord god and his spirit had sent me to preach the lord god and his spirit has sent me to go and get a job the lord god and his spirit there are testimonies that if you don't believe the word, you will think people are lying. You will even be angry before the testimony finishes. and say, is it really true? The Lord God and his spirit, not a politician, his spirit. The last time the Lord and his spirit came together, that collision brought the recreation of the earth. Genesis chapter 1. Don't turn there, just, just hang on here. The Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. He says, now the earth was dark and void and formless. And then the spirit of God hovered around the face of the waters. Verse 3, and Elohim said, light be. And the breathing of the spirit and the word ensured that God said it and he saw it. And he didn't just see it. You can see it and see what is bad. He saw it and he said, it is good. The Lord God and his spirit. I have carried this consciousness for many years and I pray I don't know the formula God will use to make this real for you but I truly pray that it happens to you especially for those of us who are in ministry the Lord God and his spirit the Lord God and his spirit the Lord God and his spirit when God goes with you worship team helped us and sang the other time that when he holds your hands everything becomes possible I know we sang it as a song but you must find a way of believing it it is true the Lord God and his spirit with God all things with God your music ministry possible with God even the enmity of all people that came from your background and know you and know your family and have kept prophecies in advance because they are so sure you will not rise you will be just like your father and your mother and the Lord God and his spirit changing the writings blotting out handwritings rewriting truths the Lord and his spirit but for his spirit and his word you would fail but the lord and his spirit you were supposed to fail but his rod and his staff comfort you they lift you up the lord god and his spirit has sent me walk in that consciousness i am not sent alone number one is that i am sent two i am not sent alone the arsenals that were sent with me 
is the word of God and his spirit the Holy Spirit is powerful and wonderful the Lord God and his spirit when the Spirit of God came upon a young lady called Mary the Bible declares that supernaturally she said how shall these things be seeing that I know not a man and he says that the power of the highest ah, the power of the highest a woman who was not qualified to be fruitful but when the power of the highest came upon her she left the rest to that power hers was to believe and say be it unto me the dynamics of how that one happened leave it to the intelligence of the spirit the same way the power of God will overshadow you and you start something that is laughable and by the third month everybody sits in wonder and says what has God done the Lord God and his spirit Acts chapter 10 and verse 38 says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost leave the power part anointed Jesus of Nazareth with a person the Holy Ghost you can't do ministry without the Holy Spirit no. you can't understand the Bible without the Holy Spirit I can tell you this when it comes to understanding scripture there is very little of your creativity and education quite honestly that plays a role you will need the illumination of the spirit are we together Elihu said there is a spirit in man and the inspiration of the almighty there is a spirit in man there is a spirit in man without that spirit there is no inspiration there is a spirit in man and the inspiration the breath of the almighty make it men of understanding you can't just understand no understanding is the holy spirit living out his intelligence through your mind so you sustain capacity that is not fair for humans to have the same way a spirit possesses a man and begins to live out its characteristics through the faculty of that man god is able to come upon you as the spirit of understanding and open up your fortitude to comprehend in an unusual degree and an unusual dimension bible study only aids it but it does not create it this one comes by the spirit is god speaking to us tonight Please give us John 16 and verse 12 and 13 and then we'll quickly go to the instructions that the Lord will have us. I have yet many things to say to you but ye cannot bear them now. Jesus is speaking about the ministry of the Holy Spirit now. How be it when he the spirit of truth that means I can trust every information that comes from him regardless of what my mind says the spirit of truth is come he will what guide you he will what does it mean to guide to coordinate you to make sure you are within the jurisdiction of truth he's able to coordinate you define boundaries so that you always stand in a position of truth that becomes an advantage the Bible says he shall guide you into all truth all truth there is a body of knowledge remember the Bible says that we are a chosen nation a royal priesthood a peculiar people are we together now it says we have been called forth to show the praises of him that has called us from darkness into his marvelous light not just light marvelous light an exact body of truth that qualifies you to possess a certain level of dominion within a dispensation is called marvelous light and the Bible says the Holy Spirit can guide you can guide you you can read a book on finances you can read a book on leadership you can read a book on all of these things wonderful but when the Holy Spirit comes he will not just educate you he will guide you guide you guide you 
we are being guided by the spirit that is the help of god given to us guided the prophetic word came by the guidance of the spirit you can't sit down and just invent a word mm, i think you are saying this no he comes in the fifth month of the sixth year of this and that the word of the lord came like a messenger sent from the throne to you and when it comes you receive it the evidence shows the lord and his spirit has sent me the bible says he shall not speak of himself but whatsoever he shall hear that shall he speak and he shall show you things to come he will cause you to be ahead not by predicting by taking you there he will show you the holy spirit does not predict because he is god he will show you this is the next line this is the system of advantage for the next years that come in ministry in life finances etc do you believe all i've been sharing blessed is she that believes the bible says for unto her not unto them unto her there shall be a performance the performance is for those who believe Belief, belief, pistis, conviction, and the action that you take based on that conviction. The ministry of the Spirit and the ministry of the Word. The ministry of the Word without the Spirit will make you religious. The ministry of the Spirit without the Word will make you superstitious. It will take the Word. And the spirit that's why those who pray and crave for the prophetic without a foundation of the word will many times double into spiritism and witchcraft that's not backsliding they are not necessarily fake but the word of God does not define the coordinates of balance for them and so you find out that they can dabble into what they themselves don't understand just because it's supernatural they will give the credit to the Holy Spirit whereas there's you is the spirit of a man can be exposed to the influences of multiple spirits so it's possible for the holy spirit to coexist in operation with other spirits not necessarily in your spirit man they can find expression around your faculties and you produce varying outcomes So it's important for us to know the word of God cultivates in you the character the understanding of God's modus operandi so that even in the administration of the spirit you are defined by the boundaries that brings balance and edification to the saints it is dangerous that's why you have a lot of people continue to pray pray until they take them in the psychiatric ward the doctors will tell you have you seen many people get to the hospital just praying praying i'm not saying they are bad people but sometimes people have gone to the mountain to pray and return back mad you you can't credit that kind of thing to god they may be well-meaning don't be offended if your loved one has been like that i'm saying that their spirits were so opened that space was supposed to be filled with the word but see every time satan sees vacuum he doesn't leave it alone he's obsessed with space if he finds space anywhere space through ignorance space through zeal without knowledge he's a welcome guest invited or not so when you begin to build capacity it's like borrowing vessels and leaving it empty he will quickly come are we together now and then those who continue to study scripture they pride themselves because the knowledge of the word has an intellectual dimension and the intellectual dimension itself is rewardable are we together now as a theologian as an intelligent person when you speak to people who are educated your ability to conjure thoughts that make sense it makes sense to civilization it makes sense to to um the 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 the, the context of men so you will think that just because you coordinated yourself well intellectually that means you have delivered according to the spirit no that's why jesus looked at the scribes and the pharisees 
and says ye are not knowing the scripture they thought it to be an insult because they believed they were better scripturally educated than jesus himself i mean these guys had they had the proofs of the entire torah in their minds they would recite it verbatim and jesus said you are still in error they felt offended don't insult us we are the doctors of the law hopefully sometime this year i will teach you how the sanhedrin council came the Sanhedrin council started with Moses. It was a system of eldership that was created for him to pour his spirit, to help him coordinate spiritual activities. And all of that error, religion, the spirit was out of it up until we get to the Roman government. We still have a Sanhedrin council, but the spirit left. Remember, there were 70 elders that were called. Come on now, are you not Bible students? That's where it started from now in the new testament the one who instructed it they have been so organized they don't even know him again who are you we have been in this ritual for decades we inherited it from our fathers and jesus said no wonder no wonder just because a thing is very long does not mean god is there hallelujah this year you must embrace the ministry of the Holy Spirit. The ministry of the Holy Spirit is not for preachers. The ministry of the Holy Spirit is not for those who want power. You know, that's the description that we have in church. You want power, they say, go and watch Benny Hinn. Go and watch this, go and watch that so that you get power. No, the Holy Spirit was giving us an advantage, the advantage of the believer. Hallelujah. Right where you are seated, I want you to pray in one minute. Lord, I open myself to your word. I'm tired of shadow boxing. I truly open up myself to your word, the ministry of your word and the ministry of the spirit. I open up myself to the ministry of your word. Let your word culture me. Let your word train me. Let your word mentor me. Please pray. I commend you to the word. I commend you to the word. I commend you to the word of his grace that is able to give you, is able to give you. I commend you. To the word of his grace it is able to build you up fruitfulness i have ordained you to go and bring forth fruit hallelujah praise the lord now very quickly i want you to listen to some instructions seven of them bishop oyedeko said we walk by common sense we run by principles but we fly by instructions the ones who produce pilots and work in the aviation industry, they are called instructors. Are we together now? The humility to constrain yourself to God's instructions. Every time a prophet came bringing the word of the Lord to a person, a family, he came with instructions. And all those who were humble enough to hearken to the instructions, saw all kinds of signs and wonders happen to them instructions can you pray in one minute and say lord give me the heart give me the heart to not argue with your instructions my son he says attend unto my words incline your ears to my sayings he says do not let them depart from your heart they are life to those who find them 
please pray you are beautiful in all your ways lift your voice and pray you are beautiful in all your ways. Lord, I delight in your instructions. I delight in your instructions. You are beautiful in all your Hallelujah. Please write this down. Listen, I want you to write it in a way that you will always be able to see. Don't just squeeze it and congest it somewhere. If you need to use a fresh page for it, write it down, not as a ritual, but as a guide. God is determined to help us experience fruitfulness. And we're starting off by receiving these words from him. Are we together now the Lord calls Moses to go up the mountain are we together now and while he's up on the mountain many things began to happen and a finger came from heaven is that true and the finger began to write on the rock carved the rock and wrote certain instructions and he said carry that instruction go and give the people that this is what will guide them to be a distinct people yes that is the old covenant the law but the principle is still the same one of the things we receive up the mountain with god is that we allow his finger to write written by god's own hand that these are the precepts remember the grace to walk in them is already supplied so he gives you walk by this there is no blessing in the spirit that does not have conditions attached to them. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and when you read verse 1 it says it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that I command you this day. Then it says that you shall be set up on high above every nation, all other nations and these blessings will come upon you to overtake you. Then it begins to list them. It shall come to pass if you will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe pay attention number one the first divine instruction for us for this year be intentional about your spiritual growth and progress instruction number one be intentional about your spiritual growth and progress be intentional the key word there is intentional don't just leave it up to God to say Lord if you want me to grow you will do it you have to be intentional the same way you are intentional about cooking you take the rigor of going to the market and nothing will stop you not even your hunger you get to the market and patiently search out everywhere till you find the ingredients you go back home time is already gone the meal may take an hour or two but you are intentional about making sure that there is a meal in the pot that's how you must approach your spiritual life we are living listen to me in times where the moment you are careless with your spiritual life you will pay for it you have to be intentional write it down let me just buttress quickly on it place priority on your time with the word place priority on your time in prayers place priority on your time in corporate fellowship I say it again place priority still buttressing on point one on your time with the word your time in prayers and your time in corporate fellowship these are spiritual bailout systems these are spiritual strategies to keep us up and doing regardless of the storms and the vicissitudes of life the lord told me this 
be intentional many of us have never truly honestly grown in the spirit there are people who truthfully speaking under god never read their bibles doesn't mean they don't open it they open it only on koinonia just look at it and you are busy you just close it and say i will read it later on it's an attack every time you are neglecting the word remember the example i gave about a body the water is reducing from 70 percent to 30 to 20 until you begin to choke spiritually the word content it's important be intentional about your spiritual growth and progress place priority invest time with the word let me advise many of us here who are working class you have businesses or you have jobs please sit down with god and design a strategy for your spiritual growth you will never have time that you didn't create did you hear what i said you will never have time thank you that you did not create you will have to create and make time anything you don't create time for there is no time for it you eat because you create time for eating you go on a job because you created time for it if you don't create time for god in your life there will not be time for god god is not about to add one minute to 24 hours we're all given that and that's all we have per day you have to create time for some of us it may mean trusting god for grace to flog out the spirit of slumber from your life if your day is obviously occupied then you have to train your spirit man to be awake and invest in the world all of us may not have equal time every day but please trust god for grace to create time create time create time create time oh how i love your lord they are my meditations all day long let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart embrace the word there was a very popular story of smith wigglesworth it was said if you went to his house you would almost be bored because all you will be doing is reading scriptures they will open the bible you will share then you close it just laugh over and then you say let's do it again and then you open the bible even in his photo you see him with a small bible holding it no wonder he was from a cobbler became one of the apostles of faith the word of god built him up gave him an inheritance if you have salary minus the word of god you are in trouble if you have more degrees minus the word of god you are in trouble if you have more influence minus the word of god you are in trouble twice for even contending for influence minus the word anything minus the word is not just zero is trouble be intentional about your spiritual growth and progress for some of us you have not yet agreed on a place for prayer with god i mean personal prayer not just tuesday prayer with prayer band and prayer here in koinonia you need to go the extra mile some of us have roommates and friends and of course you don't disturb and distract people if you trust god and cry the holy spirit you know this the way believers see god now is very disturbing people went out of their ways to found there used to be in the campus those days there's a place many of you don't know it was called lawn tennis court people would come some under the tree some near a chair they just pile a chair and you are passing sometimes you are passing you want to quickly go and ease yourself you hear somebody just praying there you know that was so near here this is me and god but now this obsession for convenience please don't get me wrong i'm not saying god wants us to be comfortable but let me tell you the truth if it is god you want to do business with trust god for grace to conquer an excessive appetite for convenience people used to pray in the rain 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 falling they would lie down and say let it finish on me and god says you do this to express your passion not because that's the activity that gets god to you but it's a token of your hunger and desperation please find a place to pray 
find a place to pray there's too much distraction in our world and don't get me wrong again i know that i'm talking to a larger body of people don't get me wrong i don't mean to be sarcastic manage social media are we together manage this some of us even if there is nothing you have to text you have to check something ah let me check who is there now those things can eat up time time will continue to pass trust god for grace to stay with the word is there any problem while you are praying like this no this is the year of extraordinary fruitfulness the rod of aaron did not just board it was kept somewhere location mattered not anywhere there was a place it was kept samuel was lying down close to the ark when he had the voice of god anywhere is not where god meets with people god is everywhere but no sensible man meets with anybody just anywhere you don't hold meeting at a junction where a mechanic is fixing a car and you say come for a board meeting no atmosphere matters with god it's true If there is no place in your house convert your toilet to an atmosphere it's not insulting at least nobody will disturb you when you are there and you cry your heart oh god open my eyes there is one thing i can see that will change my life what is it it's not just to pray and then you just pray and then say amen and you are going god has not responded were you alone you didn't believe he was there they that wait doesn't mean they that fast it means they that lie down there and say lord i'm not going anywhere god honors the faith of waiters i have benefited from waiting it's not every time you are talking and praying download worship tunes like this come and meet the worship team to set something for you like this and all you are doing is just lying down and soaking in that presence and then his word will come he will send one word to you and it will light upon your family and your generation he sent a word to jacob listen we win by the strategies we receive from the spirit there is something i must see to win joshua knew this and he refused to move until the circumcision was done and here comes the captain of the host of god he came to deliver the strategy this is what you are going to do had the angel not come joshua would have been surprised at what jericho would do for him you know the story makes it cheap cheap victory is because of the strategy god gave not because the matter is not serious when god comes he has the ability to deflate every mountain like a balloon and you say where is the mountain before zerubbabel please learn to stay learn to stay learn to stay gentlemen you want to be established it's not all about just reading reading i must make it i must huddle you need to lock yourself and say lord one thing is needful open my eyes what is it it's painful to run around and merry-go-round and find out you still did not get it his presence has value stay you're a man of god stay don't just go around sending text messages i know you may be well-meaning please invite me you you've seen me preach the other day with promise the other day i preached with pastor Femi. i think you by now you know i'm a man of god no no stay and let there be a walking of the spirit it may be for days it may be for months but let me tell you when you truly stay with god and he comes to you you will be surprised what your life will become number two let's hurry up hmm. be intentional second instruction about building capacity on the line capacity through proper exposure and useful word-based information i will take it again be intentional about building capacity through proper exposure you can underline the word proper exposure is a double-edged sword proper exposure and useful word-based information there are all kinds of information on the internet that propose success propose a good life 
th there is a maze of ideas swimming all around the internet attempting to profess solution to the various predicaments of men but heaven and earth will pass away the bible says but only his word abides forever whatever information you grant access to your life like a drug it must be vetted on the platform of the word if it does not pass that test my brother and my sister don't waste your time because you will still go to the rigor of taking it out again let it never even get there in the first place capacity second kings chapter four and one to six don't turn there just write it down the challenge of the woman was an issue of capacity not oil the oil had potentials but the vessel was small so the oil reduced to assume the shape of the vessel and the prophet identified it he said i know what is wrong it's not necessarily a need for more oil he says go and borrow vessel he said borrow not a few and she shot herself and the oil continued to pour and when there was no more vessel the oil stopped god blesses us according to his perception of our capacities matthew 25 he gave unto one five talents two talents one not according to his love for them according to their several abilities and in the end i have a teaching on this I will tell you that all the five people were tested because the man with five had the challenge of pride and overconfidence to overcome the fact that he had the highest his challenge at his level would be pride and overconfidence the man at two had the challenge of jealousy and ingratitude to overcome knowing there was someone higher than him he needed to be tested there the guy with one it is clear that it's even messy that brought that one because later on you see that his anger and none of the two spoke about the other person but the last one spoke about the rest in anger god tested them and he was right the end of the story tells us there are people who no amount of praying and fasting will ever increase their talents to three or four god sees that your most profitable spiritual and destiny position is two based on your capacity so it's not just the issue of god lift me capacity is god speaking to us god wants to enlarge our capacity and many times our minds are small the bible says now unto him ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20 who is able to do exceedingly abundantly far above all we ask or think ask or think that means your thinking and your asking holds the same value in the spirit you can ask something that your mind tells god don't matter don't bother don't answer again god answers both your prayer and your thinking your mindset also sends prayer requests to the spirit hmm. i can be well-meaning but koinonia may never be able to rise and surpass that mindset hear what the bible says that god is able to do all these things but is limited by the power working in us like tap from water from the dam limited by the channel given to it it can come out as a drop in a bucket whereas it has potentials to fill that bucket in one minute the mighty things that god is able to do is limited by the power that works in us please prophesy to someone seated to you say expand capacity pastors we need to expand capacity men of god businessmen expand your mind there is too much smallness there is too much smallness this is the challenge of africa we are superstitious about everything we are small small businesses small ministry small lives everything small we spiritualize our mediocrity and put together factors that continue to endorse it it says kings shall come out of you nations out of you refuse to be small it's not a blessing hearing is our father glorified that you bear much fruit you need to expand capacity not to acquire things oh i must buy a new this a new that mm -mm. expand your mind and your mind will bring everything that will fill up that space are we together 
number three third instruction be determined to live by faith be determined the third instruction from God to us if we truly are going to walk in the experience of extraordinary fruitfulness be determined my brothers and my sisters to live by faith for the sake of reference write this down you don't have to project it Romans chapter 1 17 Romans 1 17 Galatians 3 11 Hebrews 10 38 Romans 1 17 Galatians 3 11 Hebrews 10 38 all these scriptures say the just shall live by faith four of them in all in the Bible one in the Old Testament and one of the renditions says the just shall live by his faith in any case the just lives by faith there is an obsession for results and evidence even before we start the vision speaks in the end you must believe God enough are you getting what I'm saying now the Bible says to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace you have to trust God you have to believe God death and life and let me tell you this it is true that out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks so if the word of God is not rich in your heart your mouth will continue to speak poisonous things against your destiny there are many of us who our communications continue to minister woes to our lives we always speak of weakness we all speak of this and it's not the issue of confession Jerry. and let me say this man man is suffering man, don't do that don't do that the Bible says death and life are in the power of the tongue Proverbs 18 and verse 21 it says they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof Death is like a tree. Life is like a tree. Your mouth is like the rope you use to fetch them. You can eat death. You can eat life. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Make up your mind. No matter what it is, there's no food to eat. In the name of Jesus, it is well. I know God is faithful. I know God is faithful. Lord, I thank you. I know you are making all things new. Ah, your mother is sick. Are you aware? She's been sick since last week. In the name of Jesus, the word of God is working in my family. Let me tell you, carnal people will insult you. and say, all these church people and this, your God gave us brain. Be careful. People's brains have sent them to their graves. He's been sending people for a long time. let the redeemed of the lord say so let the blessed of the lord say so huh. and so you speak the righteousness that is by faith speak it and you declare you lock yourself and you are declaring in one room that there are holes here and there rain falling everywhere in the name of jesus is my year of extraordinary fruitfulness i receive divine ideas lord i thank you all grace working for me and someone just calls you and say i'm about to leave zaria uh is it okay if you stay in my house he says I, I i didn't get you and god says remember all grace pick the key it's yours and you tell somebody say are, are you sure that that's all that happened all grace all grace all grace believe god oh i may not have money in my pocket but in the name of jesus i'm receiving remember I'm teaching the true riches God is putting something in my life that will draw resources. Gentiles, ministry looks like it's rising and falling and you stand and speak in the name of Jesus Christ. Christ is being exalted. He draws all men by himself. I receive the strategies. I receive wisdom. I have access to his will, to wisdom, to spiritual understanding. I am fruitful. The church is fruitful. Let's minimize the time we spend programming woes to our destiny convert it to times where you speak and create realities are we together beware of naysayers our society is full of naysayers they will always laugh you over you finish koinoni and go back home and they laugh say kai apostle can preach oh ah, ah. see him quoting scripture anyhow i wish it was easy you see those kinds of people may be well-meaning but they will innocently destroy you that's why abraham had to keep some members of his household down 
because he was about to climb the mountain to do something that was unusual and sometimes people can be too innocent to allow you obey god they can be too innocent to allow the word prevail compassion can be used by satan to stop you he can manipulate the compassion of men around you you want to fast and they say ah bah you are overdoing it even me i'm touched by your hunger and you say really and then you stop whereas the last fast was when god would have come live by faith number four this is a serious one now the fourth word of the lord to us all strive by the spirit i don't know if strife is a good word if it's not find a word that is most appropriate for you strive by the spirit to be exceptional in character and lifestyle write it down please the fourth instruction to us from god if we are going to experience extraordinary fruitfulness strive by the spirit that's why i wrote by the spirit to be exceptional on the line exceptional in character and lifestyle i wrote some things here defeat behavioral limitations defeat the grip of past failures defeat the limiting grip of culture and background on your character defeat behavioral limitations defeat the grip of past failures all of these things are like claws that hold on to you and will never allow you strive to the place of destiny as ordained by God. Defeat the limiting grip of culture and background on your character. Strive by the Spirit to be exceptional in character and in lifestyle. That's number four make up your mind that this year and then as always that in the name of jesus by the spirit you will be flawless in character in lifestyle in communication that your words will minister life that you will be you will be flawless your life will be at a true living epistle say amen, amen. there are two bibles you always carry the first is the one in your house. The second is you. You will always carry two Bibles. You carry this and carry yourself too. Your life must depict a character that is worthy of emulation. We don't like this, but this is an instruction from God. I see the way many of you are looking at me strive by the spirit my brothers and my sisters be exceptional in character we live in a society where character doesn't seem to hold so much value again but the bible says you are the light of the world you are a city set on a hill neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel that in the name of jesus your character will preach to someone to be saved are we together now if the only way to evangelize is to verbalize it then something is wrong the flawlessness of your character can make somebody say let me follow your god and if you believe that with me say amen, amen. let me just interject here be careful what society calls normal be careful what society calls normal be careful what society calls normal you must have flawless character you know in all fairness i look at some of our younger ones right now and i am surprised at the level of lawlessness disrespect dishonor and there is a programming by babylon are we together now yes i was talking to my my boys this this evening and i was teaching them i said look guys if you continue to grow like this you will be great people one day god will trust you with your own ministries and all of that you may look weak but keep striving and i was challenging them because uh, permit me to use the word their generation of young men are very proud and arrogant 
if they can kick you and match your feet they say i match you somebody fell in my meeting that qualifies you to be a fellow man of god there is a lot of pride listen let me tell you the moment acknowledging grace becomes a problem for you is a sign that your life is under attack lot of pride lot of pride many of us don't respect elders again i was teaching i think i was having a meeting with the worship team or so and then i told them something and i want to challenge you to have it is the power of creeds creed c-r-e-e-d a creed is a representation of your conviction in a format that is easy to become a stronghold in your mind we were trained as children with creeds the national pledge is a creed many christian schools had creeds some of you remember now a creed is not a tradition if done well it is a system of internalizing a conviction I was trained in the Anglican seminary and we had what we call the Apostles' Creed. These are creeds that is like a statement of your conviction. These things are not there again. Till today, great corporations in the world have creeds. When they have their board meetings, they, they chant it. Sometimes it's almost like it's magical. This is what we stand for. This is, this is that. To deliver quality products in an efficient way in, you know, the most available time. You see mature people, millionaires with their ties, becoming like children. Creeds are powerful. You must have a creed that defines your life. Who are you? You must have a creed that defines your family. You must have a creed that defines your business. You must have a creed that defines your ministry. It doesn't have to be for public consumption. Who are you? What is the worship team? Who are you? What do you stand for? What do you deliver to Koinonia? Creeds are powerful. We have lost this ancient mystery. And many people do not know what they live for and stand for again. You call a pastor and say, what do you do? You say, I'm preaching the gospel. You say, what does that mean? You say, don't, don't just, I, I, I'm, I'm preaching the gospel. No. Creed. Let's hurry up. That's number five, right? Mm. Make up your mind to be responsible. Write it down. I pray in the name of Jesus that the grace that follows this word will fall on as many who need to get this this year. Make up your mind that this year I will be responsible. The word responsible comes from the word responsive. Respond. Are we together now? Don't be inactive. Don't act like the situation does not demand your attention. Our society is, is brewing a group of very, very sadly irresponsible people on all fronts. To be responsible means to have a sense of obligation. To have a sense of obligation towards life, towards your family, towards your destiny. A sense of obligation. To be responsible means to be duty bound. You have to be duty bound. Don't allow the things that are your responsibilities and act as if it does not matter. No. You are a family man. This is the year to be responsible over your family. Spiritually, financially, intellectually. To coordinate the activities within the family to reflect Christ. You are a businessman, you are a, you are a ministry, you are a career person, be responsible. And this goes as, as an added encouragement to our brothers. Let's trust God for grace to be responsible. Responsive. Responsive. Someone ha will have to get up and be interested in making things happen. Don't say they will do it. No, be the day that will do it. I know God will send somebody to help me. God has been helping us like that. The rent will expire by October, but I know whatever it is, at least between now and April, 
I know that rent will come. Abba, is it not God that sits in heaven? And you sit down and stroll yourself until the time reaches. And then you turn around and find out that you are bankrupt. And it weighs you down. Be responsible. Be responsible. Be responsible. Over your life, be responsible. Don't just be roaming around town anytime. In the morning, in the afternoon, you run around. You are a man of God. You are just kicking stones on the street and holding sugar cane in your hand and just smiling. You are not acting responsible. If you don't have anything to do outside, go back to your house and sit down. Build your mind. Are we together? You don't leave your house and come back by 1 a.m. in the morning with no explanation. No apology to anybody. Open the door for me. Who are you? I'm, I'm back home, my friend. Are you stupid? This is whose house? No, let's be responsible. Say, in the name of Jesus, I receive grace to be responsible. Wash your clothes, clean your wardrobe before koinonia. Don't start looking for what to wear five minutes to koinonia. And you find out all the clothes are dirty. Who did you leave it for to wash? You are a young man. Don't act as if you are already rich. You can outsource people to help you, but you have not made the investment and, and, and the impact that can allow people to come and wash for you. So you bend down and wash. If your clothes are dirty by 1 a.m., get up and wash. I wash everything. You see a young man, you are a young man, and there are piles of clothes. You are a young lady, there are piles of plates. You are not responsible. Did you hear what I said? You are not responsible if you do that. You have to settle down and be serious. If you set a task, discipline yourself to do it. Punish yourself in righteousness when you carelessly miss out on your tasks. Don't sit down and just forgive yourself anyhow. You were supposed to read a book and say it doesn't matter. No, you will not go far. This is the price for the crown that you so desire and so admire. God is not a magician. He doesn't make charms. There is a pathway. Number six, quickly. Two more and we're done. This is a very serious one and I want you to listen to it. When God brought this, I prayed this even for my own self. Even before writing it. Resist the pressure of pride, competition and vain glory very serious one resist the pressure this is the sixth instruction resist the pressure of pride competition and vainglory proverbs chapter 16 please and verse 18 let me tell you something in my little life i i am yet to know the one thing that destroys faster than pride please we must trust god you know why i'm saying this because we are going to see results that will dumbfound us this year and chances are that when those results come our hearts can be haughty and can be lifted proverbs 16 18 pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall when satan wants to throw you he sends pride he sends a haughty spirit you must resist it society can massage you into pride do you know what pride is coming to a position where you fail to see like vashti that you are all you are because of god vashti never apologized to the king even when she embarrassed him the bible has no record of vashti coming to say king i'm sorry no there was no record even when vashti was banished you see a relationship between Vashti and Mordecai and Haman. It was very clear that the king was weak because he didn't want to banish her. And pride goes before a fall. Let me tell you this. I have seen in my little life people rise to the sky and crash down in dishonor. With all due respect, there are men of God around the world that at one point or the other, God helped them marvelously. And for some reason, their hearts became haughty. And now it's almost as if you make reference to their past. Reject pride. It's something I have asked God to give me grace to, to fight. Because it's very easy to be proud. 
you know people come here and you see them acknowledging apostle joshua selman this and that mm -hmm. thank god for those things but let me tell you pride can kill pride is like an arm robber it can be dangerous it can come into your house like a, an arm bandit and strip you of everything that represents honor in your life are we together let's look at one scripture and we're done proverbs 29 and verse 23 resist the pressure of pride competition and vainglory a man's pride shall do what bring him down but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit what will uphold the, the humble honor there is a relationship between humility and honor god gives you increase and gives you a platform and you say lord i thank you but may it never enter my heart and while men are clapping god says no problem receive the uploads but let them know don't just say lord me and you we know <clears throat> let them know that you are the doer and god says you do this for me step into a new level a new level of increase this humility check is something that i want you to do for the rest of your life not just for this year Two points under this embrace true humility as a lifestyle and a value system embrace true humility as a lifestyle and a value system one of the ways that the lord helps me to stay humble is by always giving me visions of the past if for any reason you forget where god brought you from then you are already on your way to destruction. The do you know Esther almost made the same mistake of Vashti? That's to tell you that it the, the seat itself had tendencies. It was not about Vashti. It was about the inability. It, Mordecai was the bailout for Esther. Otherwise, she would have followed the route of Vashti. It was only a matter of time. And Mordecai said, remember. Remember. Madam, remember that's how one day God will see you when people are clapping for you you know when people clap for me and send me text messages I receive hundreds of text messages every day and over 80 to 85 percent of them are people from different nations of the world your message has blessed me apostle of the nations apostle of this Elijah of our time Moses of our time and I know that they are just innocently trying to say you are a great man and we appreciate you and I look at those things and I look at myself in the mirror I said mr man the day you become proud the day you let this enter your head and forget you were once a young boy confused and scattered that god took by his grace and mercy the day you allow the bounties of the palace to make you forget that once upon a time you begged for food that day you disqualify yourself from the flow of grace god truly opposes the proud I have seen this wreck the lives of pastors. I've seen this wreck the lives of business people. I've seen this wreck the life of people generally. There used to be this song. I will not forget, Lord, your benefits. How can I forget? I will not forget, Lord, your benefits. I will never forget. I will not forget, Lord. Your benefit. Let it not be that when you have built houses and you have done this and that, you will say, My power and the might of my hand has given me these riches. He said, But thou shalt remember. It means you can forget. Influence can make you remember God, but forget his faithfulness money can make you remember god but forget his faithfulness ah god may i never get there oh i'm asking you in the presence of your people let it not happen to me if it means closing doors close it i rather remain at the level that will keep me useful than to get to a level where you become ichabod oh you once were anointed you once were great a haughty spirit is like pouring oil 
on steps the terrible thing with pride is that your fall is seen by all pride is so deadly it supervises your fall and you must touch the ground please pray in one minute and curse the spirit of pride some of them this pride has destroyed some of our family members it has destroyed many people pride has a track record of destruction clot yourselves with humility koinonia this is god's word for us we're a ministry that god has helped but be careful he has made the list among us like david but be careful lest you begin to scorn at other ministries let you begin to scorn at other men of god scorn at other people's achievements no that's not the spirit of the christ humility oh god i've done my life i am truly nothing without you never be ashamed to let the world know you are nothing without him i will never forget oh. hallelujah powerful secret every time you are praying with god cry that prayer lord bless me oh sam you are an exceptional worshiper in fact let me tell you how people are in fact all these musicians in nigeria they are not up to one tenth of you now at first you will resist it consistency is what creates conviction not truth anything consistently repeated to you becomes a conviction including flattery joshua selman sam ah you are this and that and that and that and first sam says now have a glory be to god and later he says true it's true alexander the way you are elijah no no glory be to god but it's true taylor make me elijah's regalia let me shut down rain and this and god said no the way i love you but i'm consistent to my values and not even my love for you will stop it not every destruction is caused by satan god himself can bring men down trust god for grace this year koinonia let this be a trait in us that people don't have to say you attend koinonia just by you chanting tongues that they look at your life and say this person is no this humility we can trace you to this ministry are we together you are a boss in office or you are this clothe yourself with humility towards your workers many bosses act as if they will never leave the job that's why when it's time to retire the members are happy they are praying and the moment the people retire loyalty is not there again let people miss your presence so much they go out of their way to want to see you the reason is because you demonstrate do you know the kind of message that comes when you are great yet humble i have met people with all humility our daddy prof here every time i see our daddy here truly speaking our daddy is one of the inspirations that has kept me humble alongside the leaders of cgc and I say this with all my heart. I have learned humility from them. Genuine, truthful humility. When people who have gone ahead of you don't see a reason to say anything, it should bring you back to your knees to say, Lord, help me. Let the little that God has done and is doing around the world through this ministry not get to us. And, and I'm saying this even for the workers. Be careful. Because sometimes we can respect those above us but show our pride to those below us you are still proud you are just skillfully proud but you are proud <laughs> avoid it embrace humility it's a prayer that i pray all the time let no amount of influence let no amount of lifting 
those of us who are in ministry i do this in the open because it's true but i do it too so that you will learn because the truth is that some of us have not gone far we have not started anything quite honestly but the, the haughtiness of heart will not allow us to humble ourselves and learn music ministers learn this too because music ministers are some of the people who pride can swallow them overnight one song can reach somewhere and everybody becomes very proud and no the moment people are clapping for you turn and join them to clap for the one who without you are nothing take god out of koinonia you would think we have been holding a charm all through because god is the secret i say this in the open what i'm saying will be millions of people around the world will be listening to it i will still say it after 10 years it is i told god something i prayed a prayer and i said oh god it's a prayer i cried to god and he answered i said never show me the full extent of my impact just show me a little and that's enough for me in other words let me never know how far I'm impacting lives do you know why because our human nature when you see the extent of what you are doing sometimes you can sit down and beat your chest and say ah god boy you tried for me so that you will always remain on your knees and say i am nothing without you are you getting what i'm saying please learn this the moment you do this the devil will tell you you are falling your hand but god will say no that's how we climb the ladder we climb the ladder of honor on our knees not our feet number seven be intentional about walking in love that would be the last instruction from the spirit be intentional about walking in love john 13 34 and 35 very powerful scripture john a new commandment i give unto you that ye love one another everybody say one another say it again one another as i have loved you are you seeing that you are it's not only husbands and wives that are given the mandate to love as christ loved the church but even the brethren you are given a standard to love and you are not at liberty to influence that standard god says that you love one another to the degree i have loved you this is true agape as christ loved the church so you love one another first john chapter 3 first john chapter 3 we're going to read four verses 11 14 16 and 18 first john 3 quickly please is god speaking to us for this is the message listen carefully so there is a message coming from god now that we have heard from the beginning what is the message that we should love one another i have discovered that in the body of christ we love god a lot but the problem is loving ourselves and many people love god simply because they can't see him the same way you love someone on social media that you have not seen oh you are such a you are such a kind fellow and the person at the other side is having his his brother saying if i have a brother like this may the world perish and you are there saying he's a kind fellow the day you meet and say you are the one mm -mm. <laughs> and this is the message that we heard from the beginning that we should love one another verse next the, the verses i gave you 14 we know listen 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 we know that we have passed from death to life how not because we pray in tongues not because we have apostolic and prophetic ministries because we love the brethren he that loveth not his brother abided in death roommates hello workmates hello men of god hello family members hello brethren god is speaking to us god forbid that my mother god forbid that my sister god forbid that my brother i hate this in fact let let him even die sir. the bible says he's abiding in death next verse 
hereby perceive we the love of God uh -huh. because he laid down his life now this is the sacrifice dimension of love God is not God is not hiding it from you that your love will in many regards require sacrifice because human beings are human beings that's all we are he says we ought to lay down our lives for who not for a pastor the brethren parents love your children i know they may not be perfect but love them don't curse and make woes uh -uh. children love your parents workers or superiors in office love your subordinates men of god love your members don't use them love them genuinely enough to pay any price under god if need be to serve them hallelujah we ought to lay our lives for the brethren the last verse my little children let us love in word let us not love in word neither in tongue but in deed and in truth i love you genuinely truthfully ask god he will tell you there are pastors who love those who give them seats so if i see you compass if i see you holding an envelope i love you if i see you giving me a lift i love you come darling if i see you coming to stand and hoping i'll give you anything the way i will eye you you see that now no we must love this is the challenge with many ministries the pastors love the rich and hate the poor they love those who give them this and so you turn members into psychophants and those who do not have think there's no place for them whether you are a child of the rich whether you are a child of the poor whether you're a child of whatever the mandate of the shepherd is to love genuinely and truthfully are we together either we are lying about this thing or we are sincere when god sees your heart of love he will send the sheep to you and says go let that man be your pastor let that man be the man of god over you he sustains the kind of love required for the kind of life and background and past you are coming from let us love you cannot claim to love god that you have not seen when your fellow man that you have seen the love is not there let me tell you this i have grown more because of love than because of prayer i have grown more because of love than because of bible study i have learned and last year the holy spirit spoke this to me the hallmark of transformation is love not knowledge Are we together now are you learning this we are going to pray thank you we must be intentional about love intentional prophesy to yourself that in the name of Jesus the love of God is rich towards you to others to everyone whether they favor you or not love reach towards all men this is a true character of the christ luke chapter 8 verse 22 now it came to pass on a certain day listen that he went into a ship with his disciples and he said unto them let us go over to the other side of the lake and they launch forth uh-huh let's continue but as they sailed remember it was vision that brought this trouble if they were not moving forward there would be no need for a storm sometimes a storm does not mean you are wrong it could mean you are right they were on their way to the other side sometimes not having a storm does not mean you are all right there are times that it means you are not doing anything you are not moving 
they were on their way to the other side and then the bible says that a storm arose but as they sailed he jesus now fell asleep and there came down a storm of wind on the lake and they were filled with water and they were in jeopardy 24 and they came to him and awoke him saying master master another version says cares not that we perish and he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water and they ceased and there was calm leave it there leave that scripture there <laughs> look up a storm is made of two things number one wind number two water every storm is made of wind and water the bible says to calm the storm jesus dealt with two things he dealt with the wind and he dealt with the water that a storm does not just happen until these elements are present the wind and the water the wind in scripture always talks about the spiritual impute the realm of the spirit all through consistent from genesis 1 breathing upon them the breath of god ezekiel 37 are we together right everywhere the bible talks about wind it has to do with the spiritual dimension of anything and then number two the bible talks of water water in scripture especially with this kind of reference refers to men multitudes the voice of god is mighty upon the waters so the bible says you have no business having a storm until there is wind and water there has to be a spiritual dimension for every storm to be called a storm and then there must be human factors that can work in partnership with the realm of the spirit to make a storm real so jesus is on his way going we see that there are spirit we know that this is true because as soon as he gets to gadara we see a man and we see spirits so this condition was fulfilled are we together now that a storm cannot be a storm until there is wind and water jesus gets up and with this intelligence he knows what to rebuke the bible says look at the bible says he rebuked the wind one side and then the raging of the water was it not the man in gadara who was raging with anger are we together now the bible says they would bind that man and put him in grave and i mean at rocks and he would break the chains he came to jesus and said what is all this you have come to destroy us do not torment us and jesus rebukes the spirit jesus corrects that man and when you read down here the bible says he came and met the man in his right mind in his right senses so that means that every time humans go through storms it's a combination of two things one the physical body the situation that looks obvious but that in the realm of the spirit there is a wind that gives that water life that the water does not move on its own it is sponsored by an agency that the family problem is more than just two people are we together now that the financial storm is not just about money naira and kobo every storm is made of wind and water jesus did not only rebuke the wind the bible says he rebuked the raging of the water and the bible said they like two living things ceased and there was calm jesus is teaching us how to calm storms that every time there is a storm number one know that it only comes because you are moving forward let us go to the other side you know we have this mindset that every time storms come sometimes they mean you are wrong it may mean you are right jesus never said let us go back he did something about that situation there are times that going back is not an option you have the power to calm the storm and that the first thing he did just to encourage someone that the first thing jesus did was to rebuke the wind in that order because according to james 2 and verse 26 a spirit without a body is dead behind every body there is a spirit component to it behind every situation as a body there is a spirit component to it so he rebukes the spirit 
This is the same thing Jesus did also. When you read the 12th chapter of Luke, the Bible lets us know that one time um, he met a woman who had been stooped for 18 years, he said. And he said, woman, thou art loosed from your infirmity. And then when the woman was loosed, he now laid hands on her and straightened her and said, ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, ought not this woman, she shouldn't be in this condition as a daughter of Abraham. There are storms that continue to rage. When God showed me that vision, I knew exactly what he was saying. There are many people who will focus on what is obvious, the financial issue the marital issue the career issue you are just looking at the water the raging of the water but that the water in itself has a wind behind it there is a spirit that is sponsoring that family catastrophe there is a spirit listen very carefully this our generation that continues to ignore the reality of the spirit realm it's amazing how we try to ignore we find a way of convincing ourselves that there are no spirit influences in the world of men and if any is just mind no there are real spirits they are alive they influence people's finances they influence marriages they influence ministries they influence results every time jesus was going to handle issues he dealt with the spiritual dimension first and then he corrected the physical dimension are we together that means adjusting things from the physical is a total waste of time there are people who the solution to their problem is not counseling the guy is not a thief as a habit he's a thief as an influence that's the reason why no matter where you hide what you hide, the spirit works like a prophetic spirit with word of knowledge. He will know where it was kept. That's not a habit. There are people like Jonah who are carrying all kinds of presents that continue to program difficulties in their lives. Even something that should be easy, when it gets to your turn, it becomes horribly difficult. It's a spirit when there is a raging storm that the way to deal with it is to rebuke the wind then rebuke the water then both of them will be calm you rebuke your child and you leave the wind you are in trouble imagine that jesus met the guy at gadara and said that's all right no problem just dress well and uh, behave yourself next time when you see me legion legion of devils in one man and jesus said go out of this man now and they left and then the man imagine the man taking his bath a sound and a sane man coming back and you look at him and say ah, yesterday you were you were not like this and the man will say yes because it was me plus other entities see I have learned by experience and by scripture the the power of victory when realities in the realm of the spirit are settled is a total waste of time i am telling you to approach things purely from a scientific point or from a sociological point at best it can just provide temporary succor but if it's results you are looking for all realities must first be settled in the realm of the spirit the bible says in hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 starting says now faith is the substance of things hoped for it calls faith the evidence of things not seen and then it says for by it the elders obtained a good report verse 3 says through faith we understand that the walls were framed by the word of God, the second part is my interest. It says, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. That means the physical realm does not give birth to the physical realm. The physical realm is a child that comes from another dimension. 
every good thing has an origin from the realm of the spirit every evil thing also has an origin from the realm of the spirit are we together when a woman gives birth to a child sorry to use this analogy the child comes out and you notice there is an umbilical cord that connects into the woman that umbilical cord is a testimony that that child started from within is that true this is the same thing listen carefully every situation you see is like a baby when you trace carefully you will trace the umbilical cord and it will disappear you will have to be spiritual to know where it extends to and some spiritual umbilical cords are long because they come from regions that are very far hallelujah but what does the doctor do to have the child completely free he cuts it off period for as long as that umbilical cord is there that connection remains and then he cuts it off this is exactly how it is stop approaching life just from the physical standpoint i am telling you this is a waste of time it's a waste of time i have read my bible and i have learned every flourishing ministry does not start just by an anointed man and cheers and members and keyboardists and intelligent speaking no sir it starts from the realm of the spirit there must be a testimony in the realm of the spirit that reflects in the physical the book of job how did it start the bible says once upon a time the writer of job gave us the duality of realms we were able to see things from both realms and the bible says the whole story did not start just on earth that the discussion started in the realm of the spirit in the heavenlies and a man came and was proposing all kinds of things satan going to and fro and god said have you considered my servant job and satan testified and said well i came to him and i found him fortified and he said is it for nothing that you cover this man while that is happening in the realm of the spirit job gets up in the morning and he does not know that is one week left for his tragedy to start he's on earth hmm. imagine the night before all his children will die and all his cattle he was still the greatest man in the east but overnight when the realm of the spirit finishes something it will take only god to correct it whatever happens in the physical realm is just acting believe me the same way from the foundations of the earth the lamb was already slain and so it will be impossible for it not to happen in the physical realm regardless of what satan did all the manipulations are we together the bible says that god has blessed us already with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in christ is already done that means the the reality that these things have been established in the realm of the spirit should give us confidence that for as long as we partner with god inevitably it must find expression in the physical realm this i believe build the ministry from the realm of the spirit and watch what happens in the physical realm build the business from the realm of the spirit and watch what happens in the physical realm build the children from the realm of the spirit the dedication i did for our little one here that's what they did for many people they dedicated them to idols and immediately the next week they went to america and never came to nigeria again yet their lives continue to parallel somebody in the village although they're in america why because there was an authorization that the realm of the spirit will should feel free to continue to create scenarios that draw people back we are thriving and excelling because what you see is only a reflection it has been finished already the miracle service has been finished already in the realm of the spirit the rejoicing version of you is already a reality in the realm of the spirit are you seeing that now and that's why for as long as your heart is open and your faith can connect inevitably you will see the hand of god he said who has believed our report to him that man the arm of the lord has been made manifest why do we call for these kinds of services 
they are not just moments to while away time there are several people outside everywhere thousands of people all around this ground and many more connecting around the world god is not stupid to gather a people some of you left this journey from maybe outside of this nation within this nation traveling risking your life to come and sit down would god be joking with you to bring you here Abba. i believe in jesus i believe in his power i believe that god can turn things around listen to me please i want to shake off unbelief from you i believe that god in a moment in a twinkling of an eye that a whole family can come and just sit in and say lord can you turn our lives ha! do you know as a man of god i've been around this thing for a while and maybe a little while and i'm telling you myself even as a man who god has helped sometimes i am in awe and shock at the way god moves that someone can just come and sit in the presence of god my brothers and sisters and the anointing of the holy spirit comes like a drug and that's it you step up and doors open just like that it's like a dream everything you are looking for is also looking for you please hear me believe what i tell you everything you are looking for is looking for you if it has not gotten to you something stopped it i desired once and again to come to you but satan hindered us everything you are looking for is looking for you the breakthrough the lifting the anointing the new levels the increase the expansion it is god's will his testament already tells us there's no need going to pray and say is it god's will no the will of god is revealed through his word i wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospereth and then scripture says let god be true and that every man a liar if you believe this about god then you will also know that the bible says while we look not at the things that are seen but the things that are unseen why because the things that are seen are temporal what does temporal mean subject to change fading but the things that are unseen are eternal that means everything that does not represent the counsel of god can change can change it's a miracle that my life of lack can change are we together now my life of living from drug to drug from death sentence to death sentence can change so the question tonight is not can god do it no 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 the ministry of jesus captured all of this he preached he taught he healed the sick listen carefully he casted out devils he made for the provisions of people that there be supplies so i know god is able to do it please don't come sitting here tonight wondering i've gone to many churches you may say i've been prayed for by several people apostle you don't know the amount of vigils let me tell you something and i submit to you respectfully every challenge is at the mercy of the grace that confronts it listen very carefully don't generalize troubles every challenge is at the mercy of the grace that confronts it the anointing is like money if you have one thousand you have money but that money can only buy to the limit of one thousand and if what you need to buy is ten thousand you are in trouble you will need to add nine of what you already have in addition to what you have to make that a possibility so then death walks in us that life will walk in you my assignment is to continue to grow in the anointing and to continue to grow in the revelation of the truth why because it is in that growth 
that more people's testimony is resident that means the testimony that the level of grace i occupied three four five years could not produce if it cannot produce that result till now then i'm not growing the problem is never with those who are having the challenge you see i continue to say this the problem is not with members it's not with the sick people no the problem is the limitation of the grace that is upon the person who is dispensing the word it is true why do you call one doctor consultant and then you call another um, a resident doctor what is the difference they are all doctors is that true are they all doctors i believe in the power of god i truly believe in miracles i believe in miracles number one because the bible allows it number two because this is how men know that jesus is lord listen to me the demonstration of the power of god in miracles signs and wonders no matter who argues around it is the authorized signature sign el shaddai this is how he works when he moves upon the lives of people he leaves his signature there where the carcasses are they say that's where the eagles will gather please let me encourage you if you are a man of god here and you are here in this meeting please desire more than receiving a miracle desire a solid impartation of a real grace that is provable 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 no amount of poster would do the work of a real miracle no amount of handbill now i'm not being sarcastic will do the work of a real miracle a transformed life is a real miracle a healed body is a real miracle hallelujah we have come here tonight to celebrate the hand of god resting upon people resting upon families some of you are here for the first time because through the messages and through testimonies you have heard that this is what god is doing now you are seated like somebody who is ready to watch a movie and you are wondering okay is my case too big will god be able to visit me you know reminds me of how patients talk to doctors they believe that the doctor has never seen their phone say doctor you don't know the pain eh when i'm turning the doctor i already know the situation don't just be patient say, don't allow me let me let me explain to you let me even try to turn and he's looking and the man says i was in medicine before you were born i've met this kind of thing before i know the solution and sometimes the solution is funny you can just give him a prescription and he said that's all I thought I would be on admission. I said, no, no, it doesn't call for that kind of emergency. Just because you are threatened by the situation does not mean the situation is a threat. No. no. Apostle, you don't know the kind of financial trouble that is on my head that brought me here. No. It's a threat to you, but it's not a threat. Find a way of believing what I'm saying because it is true son of righteousness is here with healing in his wings yeah. the son of righteousness is here with lifting in his wings yeah. The Son of Righteousness is here with speed in His wings for someone's destiny. The Son of Righteousness is here with fire in His wings. The Son of Righteousness is here with healing in his wings. Listen, when the Lord called me, I told him something. I said, Lord, I know how unfair it is 
to gather a people and not have the power to allow your might to be revealed in them. You know, most times there are people who just act as if once the people hear the revelation of the word is all right. Uh, if they are not changed, that's okay. No. I believe in miracles. I believe in the word becoming flesh. God reaching down to people. I believe in situations changing with proofs. Proofs. Your account. Proof. Your destiny. Proof. Everything with proof. And we will continue to thrive and push through and see to it that by the grace of God Almighty that we grow to realms in the spirit where every challenge that comes is within the jurisdiction of the grace provided to provide answers. That's what God does. You come and sit down in this atmosphere, ladies and gentlemen, and you are wondering, can God step into my situation? I love Jesus with all my heart. I have read the scripture. I have seen what God can do. Can God give me a job? Can God open a door? Can God put this anointing upon my life? Can God lift the death sentence over my life? Can God bring to end this age-long captivity that has tied the family? The answer is yes. Let me repeat the answer is yes god is able before god gathers a people like this he will check first whether he has the power to do it it is based on that conclusion that he gathers a people he will call a solemn assembly and say come and experience god hallelujah praise the lord so tonight i like your faith to be fired up don't don't allow the devil to reduce you to the realm of the flesh where you are wondering how can god make a way in the wilderness there are many ways god can deliver you from the wilderness he can leave the wilderness there and carry you that's method one number two he can scatter every rock in the wilderness and make a road out of it three he can leave you there and carry the wilderness it doesn't matter how he does it the most important thing is you are separated from it look at the size of your challenge the heaven is his throne and the earth is his footstool footstool hallelujah it is footstool please help those here the power of god i just saw light just flashing here two people just here the power of god is touching them the lord straight up is visiting them and for one i'm seeing god remove something that looks like a growth around the stomach i command that growth to go now in the name of jesus there are two of them there's two i saw two lights so just this way and it's the ministry of the spirit you see two lights there is there is one something is coming out of the stomach this is what i'm seeing um i don't know what it is looking like but it's looking like a thread just coming out of the stomach lord we believe in you lord we believe in you there is a man of god here the power of god is coming on him you are a ministry you are a man of god I just saw it by the Spirit. Let me tell you why these things happen. Look up, please. Let me teach you something. Don't worry about the time. I just want to show you something in two minutes. I just fell to digress. You see, all you see is not all there is. When God calls a man, there is not only an anointing, there is an office and there is a throne that defends what he represents. There are certain operations of the spirit that are not only products of the anointing. No. There are certain operations that are legislations. It is not the anointing that makes it happen. There is an office in the realm of the spirit recognized accredited by god allocated for that grace and that office please listen understand what i'm teaching you so that when words come like this 
I'm not trying to transfer the anointing to the person to make it happen. No, 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 no. No. There are times that that happens. Try to understand what I'm teaching you. There are things that are, they are governmental legislations. You see, let me tell you, there is growth in the spirit. And people can grow to realms where certain privileges are given to them. What was the privilege of the man with the parable of the five, two, and one talent? He said, I set thee over kingdoms. What kingdoms? That was the reward he got. A ranking in the spirit. That means I extend your dominion that these other kingdoms, they also come under the influence of your speaking. That means you can declare things. When I started out in ministry, I would not minister that way. Because it was not by this, this grace for legislature. It was just about the anointing being properly channeled. But now that's not just the issue now. No. At that level, you will not be able to minister to a crowd like this. You see that. So when I declare and I speak sometimes, it is not just an anointed man speaking. No, there are speakings that come from the anointing, but there are speakings that come by reason of the office that speaks. The centurion said, I am a man under authority. Authority. There is a government. There, I am a captain. I have an allocation in the army. There are people who must hear me because I am under that grace. That means there are things that can be called. Listen. If I am walking, if I am walking in a restaurant and I am the manager in that restaurant, now, whether I can cook or not, I am the manager. Do you understand what I'm saying? And that means there are certain privileges that can happen. Is that true? It is within my power to tell you, come and sit down in that restaurant. Please serve him. You see that? I cannot cook physically, but I occupy a position that has a cook under me. I can make his grace work for you. This is what I'm saying. I'm not the one who prepared the food, but there is somebody who can cook. But both the cook and all of this is within, the restaurant was given to my care. Let me tell you what this means. Please listen. And, and I'm careful to say this because many young people, once they get these kinds of things, they usually will not understand what the man of God is saying. And they will go online and start writing things that are er erroneous. Let me tell you this. There is an office you can occupy that the grace must not be on you to reach people. That means if Pastor Femi has a grace for prayer and you need it, I can grow to a point in the spirit whereby the power of submission, I, me, a man, I can take the grace on him for prayer because it is needed and it is part of the apostolic duty to see that this guy's prayer life is on i can partner with the holy spirit and take the grace for prayer that is on him i may not have it as a person but because he needs that grace god can use me to take that grace and place it on someone it's true We remain humble before God and we thank him for the things that he continues to provide. But let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, men are not just men. This is a revelation that is very, is very difficult to understand, but it's powerful when understood. So when God gathers us like this, God will not bring you to a place that cannot bless you. No, God does not work like that. He will first check your problem before directing you. So if he allowed you to come, it is because he has checked. It's like a checklist. And he said, no, no, no. The grace for your problem is here. Go. You can go. The same way you apply for admission, you first check whether the course you want, do they offer it? Just because they don't offer your course does not mean they are not a university. 
There are times that only one university is offering a particular course and you will travel and go down there. Why? Because you want to access it. This is how these things are spiritually too sometimes. Doesn't mean that we're the only ones doing what we're doing. That would be pride and that would be untrue. But let me tell you something. That as God continues to engrace us, then he provides a platform and an opportunity for the anointing to step. I know that not many of us are sick, crippled and all of that. So it's difficult because you may not see visible signs immediately. But the anointing comes on you and then you can go. As you go, you, you know what is on you by what starts to change. So you're a man of God. You go back. Ah, I came to Zaria. It was a powerful meeting. And then God leads you to certain people. And for the first time, you are surprised. You are talking to the person and you are hearing names that you don't know. You are saying, okay, I used to just think these things are intuition. So the speakings of God can be this clear. I can know it this much. Tonight is not only a night of deliverance. Tonight is not only a night of healing. Tonight is not only a night to calm storms. Tonight is a night of receiving. I really believe that impartations to receive, to receive. You have to add to the grace that is upon your life already. Grace and peace be multiplied. If you stay where you are, you will not grow in results. Grace and peace be multiplied. You are a prayer warrior. You are, the, you are a leader in a group. You remain at that level. Everybody will go and leave you there. And they will not listen to you again. That's the truth. Because they have exhausted the level of grace. It's not that they don't want to love you. You have to grow. So take away your mind from anything that can distract and focus on God. Place something upon my life. Lord, you have come. Put something upon my life. Put something upon my destiny. And if you came here as a family, put something, oh God, upon our family. Son of righteousness is he with fire in his eyes. The son of righteousness is he with healing in his wings. Hallelujah. Who is Deborah? Overflow one. Just we're going to be very fast tonight. Deborah. Someone in overflow one. Deborah. We're going to pray. Deborah. She's at the back. You are wearing something on your head. You are tying something on your head. Outside. Overflow one. Son of Righteousness is here, healing in his wings. Son of righteousness is here. I'm going to pray, but the person I'm seeing is wearing traditionals, it's like it has a little of maroon touch on it traditionals this is what i'm seeing i will pray for you the son of righteousness is he when you find such if there's if there's nobody like that no problem my dear where are you coming from zaria I want to pray for you. Look at me. Your life will so change this night. It will surprise you. There is a God in heaven. I'm seeing you crying. And the Lord is wiping your tears completely. Just by his spirit. He's wiping. Where are you from? The mic is not working. Find out why. Please. Can I pray for you? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. I release you, my dear. Deborah is your name. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. I release you from captivity. I set you free by the Spirit of the living God. I'm saying something that has tied you huh? from head to toe. But the Lord is saying to release you. And I declare to you by the Spirit of the living God that God now is releasing you 
completely by the spirit of the living God releasing you right now my dear where are you coming from outside your name is Deborah can I pray for you in the name of Jesus who is that her name is Deborah where was she outside what's wrong with her huh why how long madam madam you feel pain in your back severe pain where we're going to pray for the sick huh? so when we pray for the sick you will come out and i'll pray for you okay you came with her you're her daughter who are you just a friend that came you're a nice lady come what do you, what are you trusting god for huh? a life partner i love you you're a very honest and sincere lady and i'm going to pray for you huh? hold my hands father honor your word in the name of jesus christ give this lady a very godly man by the spirit of the living god find somewhere for her let her sit down we are going to pray i want to pray we are going to do a very quick walk tonight the power of god is coming on someone around the worship team here i just saw just like light i don't know who that person is but i just saw light around the worship team we are going to pray please lift your voice in one minute and cry lord visit me please pray quickly lift your voice and pray make sure you pray something must come upon your life tonight coming from come this lady you yes where are you coming from you are schooling here from where your state you are from Kaduna state where are your loved ones tell them the month of November is a month of breakthrough for your family huh? that's what God is telling me to tell you November is a very strange month of breakthrough. Huh? Your dad. That's what I'm saying. Something would have happened to someone this November, but the Lord is saying November is a month of breakthrough for your family. In the name of Jesus, I declare and I prophesy to you, let it come to an end now. The spirit that kills people by November it comes to an end now i command by the spirit of the living god the bible says now the lord is that spirit it says and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty there is liberty there is liberty there is liberty let it end let it be over right now let it be over right now Father, I pray tonight in the name that is above all names, that your mighty power in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, that it be made manifest across this place. Let yokes be lifted, let burdens be lifted, let all kinds of yokes be broken in the mighty name of Jesus. Now listen, please. I want to pray for you. Please pay attention. Focus on Jesus. It is not just a call to have people fall under the anointing. No. 
I want to pray and minister the power of God that if there is anything at all within this circumference that is not of the Christ, that as we pray, the power of God comes upon you. Please, we'll, have, we'll make it very fast and the ushers will bring them out. We are going to shout that name that is above all names. It's not a ritual. Wherefore, God had so highly exalted him and given him a name. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you will honor your word and honor your name. At the count of three, together as a family of faith, we are going to shout that name. Already I'm telling you, I see fire just like rain, but it's the rain of fire coming on people to end all kinds of oppressions. At the count of three, one, two, three, shout Jesus. That every power that is not of God, go now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the name that is above all names. I decree and declare. The forces of ancestry. Yokes of darkness. Please bring them out quickly, quickly, quickly. We're praying again. Hear me. The Bible says, even the lawful captives shall be delivered. You are going to shout that name again. Not just for yourself. Not just for your family. That everything that is not by the Christ, it must give way right now. I speak to principalities and powers and thrones and dominions and every name that is named are you ready to shout now at the count of three one two three shout jesus release them now release them now 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 release their destinies by the blood release them now the bible says even the captives of the mighty shall be delivered hallelujah was you praying you're going to shout two more times this is the second to the last time the Lord wants to end patterns. Something that happened to someone, your mother is now happening to you. Your mother was raped. You are now being raped. Your father failed. You now failed. In the name of Jesus, I declare. Now, this one, I see fire coming on several people, inside and outside. Lord, I pray, anyone here who is a victim of patterns, strengthened by spirit, at this shout, oh God, let there be deliverance. One, two, three, shout Jesus. Be free now. Be free now. Repeatable patterns that tie people down. Outside, inside, be free now. everyone who is under the influence of any strange spirit whether here or any of the overflows i declare to those spirits the bible says now the lord is that spirit and that where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty i speak by the anointing in the name of jesus that this spirit let them go and release the families all those in front here at the count of three, release them, release their families. One, two, three, go now, go, 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 go. The woman holding photo, there's a woman here holding a picture. There's a woman holding a picture. Come, madam. 
Let every other name fade away. Come, mother. Let every other name fade away. Till there's only you. Let every other name fade away. Jesus, take your place. Jesus, take your place. Madam, where are you coming from, ma? From Port Harcourt. I want to pray for you. I'm seeing a stronghold of witchcraft across your family. But the Lord is saying, these are your children? Where are they? Your children. I'm seeing two of your children in the U.S. Is the mic working? It's not working. Is it working? Please help us. Let there be someone who is. Huh? I'm seeing two of your children in US. How many of them are in US? Okay, three of them in US. Who is in UK? Where is the one in UK? There's one in UK. Listen to me, madam. God is going to come upon your family and bring rest roundabout. Rest roundabout. In the name of Jesus, madam, I lay my hands on you and upon this request. Turn every captivity, my God, to become like the streams of Negev, the Negev. Be free now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Over now. The power of God will touch them in the U.S., in the U.K. I bring liberty to this family right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Um... My friend, this man, please just clear the way for me. The man with gray hair just near this one. Come, sir. Let every other name fade away. Where are you coming from, sir? Niger State. From Niger State. Are you a man of God? What do you do? Pastor. You are a pastor. Where? I have a ministry. Point of joy ministry. You have a ministry. I have to pray for you. I'm seeing a serious embargo. First on your life and then on your ministry. I don't know you, sir. I've not seen anything around you. But I want to pray because I'm seeing, number one, God is taking away this embargo upon your life. But number two, I'm seeing that God is granting you the spirit of revelation. Amen. The revelatory grace. Amen. Revelatory dimension of the anointing. And then I'm also seeing God raising financial support. Help us. Amen. Very strong pillars for you. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Can I pray for you, sir? Is it alright if right. I pray for you? Right. I hope you're not embarrassed that I pray for you. I hope you're not embarrassed that I pray for you. No, no, no. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for this servant of God. Sir, in the name that is above all names, I speak to you because you believe. May the Lord shift you to a new dimension of ministry. Let the grace for revelation rest mighty upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I declare to you, God will raise strange financial helpers to attend to your needs. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Who is, I'm hearing... Who is Ezekiel? Ezekiel. We have to hurry up, but I'm hearing a name Ezekiel. Of course, I can imagine that there will be so many people with that name, but we have to hurry up because I want to pray. Ezekiel. I'm hearing a name Ezekiel. And the Lord wants to minister to that person now, please. Every foul spirit. There is a family here. You are from Zonkua. Zonkua should be Southern Kaduna. Is that? Zonkua. Where are you? Please verify. Let's, let's make sure that. You are a family. Oh, it's not just one person. I'm not just saying one person who came. 
There are many people who came who are from Zonkwa, were in Kaduna State. I'm saying a family. This is what God is revealing to me. Let me pray for you. You came out for Ezekiel. I want to pray for you. What do you do, my friend? You are, you are brothers? Ezekiel, I will pray for you. I, of course, I will pray generally, but it, it may not necessarily be for everybody. My friend, let me pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, please, hold on. I hope, I hope there's, there's why they are coming out. Why, why are all of you out for Ezekiel? Okay, I'll pray for you. The Lord is asking me to do something, except that the Lord said so. I wouldn't have done it. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I'm seeing at least eleven people when I pray for them. Please don't be embarrassed. The addiction of smoking um, either drugs or this um, uh, all these things that they smoke. There, I'm seeing at least eleven people. And the Lord is saying he wants to deliver them now. Now, in this place. I'm going to pray for these gentlemen, but I'm going to ask those people. Listen, there's nothing to be embarrassed about. I, like I said, I would not call you to embarrass you, but God is showing me, both men and women, not only women, addicted to smoking this codeine or, or cocaine or whatever it is, drugs. The Lord wants me to pray for those people. So I'll, immediately I pray for this, I will call you. Please leave your friend, leave whatever you are doing and you'll come and stand and I'll pray for you. My friend, let me pray for you. In the name of Jesus, I declare that God is lifting you. In the name of Jesus Christ, God is lifting you by the power of the Holy Spirit. And that everything that does not represent the counsel of God, let it live your life right now. And for all of you who stood in for the name Ezekiel, I pray for you. My friend, look at me. God is visiting your family, eh? You. is visiting your family in a very strange way. This, it will not reach weekend, next week, before you start getting testimonies. This thing I'm telling you is less than one week. Write it down. I speak to you by the Spirit of God. May the Lord honor this word. And for all of you who are standing in for Ezekiel's in the name of Jesus, everything around your life that is not the planting of the Lord be delivered right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, God bless you. What's, what's, well, from Zonkwa, sir? Are you a family? Yes, God, it's our family. This is our father, but he cannot speak English. No problem. He's welcome. Please come. Let him come. No, don't, don't let the children who cry. Their ch Is it the same family? Yes. Uh, don't worry, I'll pray for you. And this one's too? And your children? Madam, what do you do, ma? I'm a nurse. You are a nurse. I will pray for you, Ho. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, turn this woman's life around. Amen. And turn the life of her children around. Amen. In Jesus' name. God bless you. Um, who is what? He speaks your language. You okay? When I talk to you, don't worry. You don't have to give up. When I talk to you, you will, you will interpret to him. Eh? Tell him that I'm seeing something that looks like a shrine, and that this thing has been responsible for the retrogression of everybody within this family. That people rise in this family just when they should sit down, they either die or go down. graduate from school before he died that's what i'm saying yes. i'm seeing that this is yes. what happens yes. just when people should His settle first down my brother, yes. our first born, he graduated this? from school before he died is your father yes. is he your brother yes, he's my brother okay oh please someone help us and attend to these children please these are your don't worry my dear there's no need to shout please tell him that there is a name that is above every other name And that I'm going to pray right now. And no matter how long it has stayed, this entire family must be set free. Can I pray? What do you do? This student. Where? ABU. You love Jesus. I love Jesus. You are going to be an evangelist. 
I don't know yes. him. I don't know anything. I'm just, I'm just telling you that this man, I'm seeing by the spirit, this, this boy you are seeing is going to be a mighty man of God, an evangelist. Hold my hands. I release you into this grace. May this anointing take you to dimensions untold. In the name of Jesus Christ, fresh grace for prayer, fresh grace for the word. I shift you by the spirit into these dimensions now i pray for this family and every other family that has this kind of thing that there are forces that sit on people's destinies just when people should sit down they crash down in the name that is above all names i declare be free now be free now help this girl be free now every spirit look at the children i cause this spirit now now out of this family in the mighty name of jesus i release this family from the spirit of death and the influences of the grave be free in the name of jesus christ and let me prophesy to any other family here that is under this kind of yoke in the name of jesus come out of it now hallelujah God bless you. Thank you so much, sir. God bless you. Please, they can go back to your seat. Now, I want to pray. Our time is gone. We must hurry up tonight. But the Lord is showing me people who want to be delivered from this addiction to drugs and smoking. Listen, no, everybody here is a product of God's mercy. There's no such thing as anybody. There are not many times I do this, but I have to obey what God is. Are you here for that case? Huh? Okay. May the Lord bless you. In the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless you. In Jesus' name. So please, I'm going to give one minute. Whether you are in overflow 3, overflow 2B, 2C, 4, wherever, or in here, you know that some people are not bad they are not bad people they just need to be free please run and come and stand here right now you are addicted to all of these drugs don't be looking at anybody to say so this one is none of your business please celebrate everyone it takes a lot of courage for them to come are you clapping for them everyone please there are still more people because I saw a number of people in my vision as God was speaking to me. You love the Lord, but this addiction. See, these addictions are spirits. It's not about somebody being good or bad. Look at them coming. It's not. Look, let me tell you the truth. Addiction is something that is, there is a spirit behind it. Please keep coming. Be bold and come and stand. God will set you free from it. Son of Righteousness is he with healing in his wings. Hey, 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 hey. The son of righteousness is he with healing in his wings. Please hurry up. I'm about to pray for them now. So if you belong to that category, if your friend is stopping you, leave that friend and come and stand. Nobody is condemning you. It's an addiction. It's a spirit. When you see the kinds of people coming, some of them are better than you in terms of character. It's a spirit. We have to deal with this thing because it's killing people everywhere. Some of you just have dreams and right from the realm of dreams, you cannot resist it again. I want to pray a serious prayer for you. Jesus is here. Some of you were doing well. You were excelling even in life academically until that spirit just came. And it just brought you down. I want to pray for you. Some of you were introduced to it by friends. Friends. They brought you together. 
gave you those things. Look at people coming. Let's celebrate them. Young and old. This is not an issue for young people. Young and old. All together. God is setting people free. Listen. Let me tell you. Sincerely. I love every one of you. And I know that many people would not have one tenth the courage to come and stand. This is a family. Nobody dares condemn you. We are products of his grace. The Lord wants to set you free once and for all. Hallelujah. Now listen, let me tell you this. Remember the teaching that I gave you. I told you that every storm is calmed by rebuking the wind and rebuking the water. It is not what you hold and smoke or what you swallow that is the issue. There is a spirit. No amount of guidance and counseling will solve the problem. You will need to be delivered. And I want to pray for you. Praise the Lord. There are two things I want you to do for me. One, when I pray for you, you have a responsibility to let some of the association, because I know how addictive these associations are, tell them that Apostle Joshua Selman prayed for you and trust God for grace to leave them alone. Come to the house of God and make good friends. Are we together? You are not free when your association is not free. Because some of you, you probably have made attempts before. But you will go back and you will meet those people and they will laugh at you and say, forget about that nonsense. So you have to trust God for grace. But let me pray for you. Please lift your hand if you can. Some of you are here. Some of you are standing for your children. Some of you are standing for your loved ones. I know that not all of you are standing for yourself. Father, you gave this as a revelation. There are many people under the addiction of strange spirits. And Lord, I stand right now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And I declare that in the frontier from my left to my right, let the angel of deliverance move right now across this place and cut the help them please my god and cut this chains. i'm praying for all of you in front now the legal basis upon which this spirit operate by the blood of the eternal covenant i break that legal hold now i break that legal hold now the spirit of addiction to drugs be free from it now be free from it now in the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, I pray for every one of you. Hear me. I'm saying it again. I don't care how it came into your life. It leaves you now and forever. It leaves you now and forever. Any association that the devil uses to keep you here. In the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost. I set you free from them forever. I declare by the anointing of the Holy Spirit that you are free. Say after me, all of you in front. Say in the name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. I stand by the blood of Jesus. And I declare that from tonight and forever, I am free from any and all forms of addiction. I declare that from tonight addiction to drugs addiction to anything that is not of the Christ it leaves my life now and every spirit behind it I command you to let me go now I declare my liberty I declare that I am free in Jesus name let it be so for you by the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm speaking to you by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. No one condemns you. We stand as a family. We stand by you. And we agree as a family of faith. You are free from this nonsense this night. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please return back to your seat rejoicing. Let's celebrate them. Return back to your seat rejoicing. Let's celebrate them. hallelujah now don't be embarrassed i'm going to pray from here but i'm seeing a spirit on a lady 
it is only married men that look for you Shalis kabarutas kabariata only married men a young gentleman who can settle down with you will never be interested in you but a man who is already married that's the one who will look for you in the name of jesus whether in this auditorium overflow one two three whoever is standing under the influence of that spirit i'm declaring right now by the anointing of the holy ghost be free now shout a loud amen be free now please help that girl be free now i'm still praying i'm, I'm still sensing this anointing is still is like he's moving and searching for people I say it again, that anointing, that grace, whatever it is, that makes only married men to look for you. In the name that is above all names, be free now. Be free now. The Lord is showing me a door in the spirit. And I'm seeing that door closed. Before we pray for the sick, the Lord is saying to open that door. I believe that there are many people, it represents the next level of several people's lives. I stand right now, my God, I'm seeing rain just coming on people. My God, the King of glory, I declare, everybody who is standing in front of a closed door, I speak to that door, be open now. Be open now. Bring this woman for me. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yahweh. Who came with this madam? She came on her own. Because the kind of breakthrough I see God bringing for this woman will surprise you. Madam, I don't know you, but in a name that is above all names, you came with her? From where? Here. In the name of Jesus, madam, I don't know you, but I speak to you by the power that raised Christ from the dead. Every closed door before you I command that door to be open now in the name of Jesus. Be open in the name of Jesus Christ. Be open in the name of Jesus. As I pray for her, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command every spirit that is not of God to leave this lady. Look at her tearing her clothes. You see how these wicked spirits walk. Listen, let me tell you something. Deliverance look at me deliverance is not just the issue of shouting and demons rolling up, up and down no now you can see this girl imagine that she's your fiance and your wedding is next week you see what we're saying I, i'm not saying she's a bad person please don't mm -mm. but you the spirit will not shout when they are joining you it's when you have gotten married you see these wicked manifestations now the lord is that spirit and the spirit where the spirit of the lord is are you looking for a job who is looking for it i'm seeing hold on please listen um my sister please shift for me this fair lady where are you coming from kaduna yes, sir. come and stand here i'm seeing someone shaking your hands that you got a job are you looking for a job let us stand up are you looking for a job yes sir hear the word of the lord i'm telling you i'm seeing god giving you a job that will surprise you there's, there's no need to cry god is here to roll away reproach and to take away shame i prophesy to you in the name of jesus according to this that the lord has revealed you will come and stand here and you will testify of your job in the name of jesus let the power of god come upon you and set you free right now now very quickly we are going to do two things please 
if how many of you have written your prayer request if you have written your prayer request please bring it out if you have not written it take time to write very quickly now um What is, I'm hearing Baba Silas. What is Baba Silas? Baba Silas. I don't know if that is a name or that's a name of somebody's father. Baba Silas is what I'm hearing. If there is such a person, let me just talk to the person. Now, quickly, please submit your prayer requests. Um, there will be ushers, PR, help them, or whatever department. Huh? What? Give him the mic. What's your name? What's your name? Huh? Your brother is Silas. What I'm hearing is Baba Silas. I will pray for you. I'm not. Why are they coming out, please? Huh? Your father is Silas. We'll pray for you. Let me just touch you and then you go back. Let it be over in Jesus' name. Whatever it is you are standing in for, let it be over in Jesus' name forever. In the name of Jesus Christ, by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, over forever. In the name of Jesus, whatever the challenge is, over forever. In the name of Jesus Christ, I set you free from sickness. They will not say you have fibroid. I curse that devil, that lady you are carrying. I rebuke that spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. All right, please, all those, listen, please, we are going to pray for the sick now. Um, there are so many people tonight and we have to be fast, our time is gone. But let me say this, whether you are in overflow one or two or three, if you are coming here particularly trusting God for fruit of the womb, whatever overflow, no matter how far, I want you to come into this main auditorium because I will pray for you. Um, alongside them, all those who are trusting God for healing, please come and stand now. Overflow 1, please move to your projector stand. Um, protocol will have to help me. How many overflows do we have tonight? There are so many. rise up on your feet stretch your hands to this place cry from the depth of your heart you don't have to kneel please stand cry from the depth of your heart father this egyptian that i see today i see them no more forever is someone stretching your hands pray pray don't look around pray Zekete preteke to shalabaruda sadabaladaba. Unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Shabrateka paruta sabaradaba. In the name of Jesus, turn situations around. In the name of Jesus, wipe tears. In the name of Jesus, let impossible situations turn around. Parutas Kabarada Gadesh. Declare it. Those online follow us as we pray. We prophesy upon this request. We pray over your request in the name that is above all names. The God of miracles. We cry, Abba Father. Hallowed. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. We cry, our Father. We cry, our Father. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Let me tell you this. This part of the miracle service is a very powerful part. People have recorded unspeakable testimonies, turn around by the hand of God. Father, I bow my knees in the name of Jesus. By the privilege of the grace that you have supplied, I bring before you, O oh God, 
the pain, the tears, the requests of your people. They have brought this as a token of their faith, as proof that they believe you. Lord, you do these things because you love us, but you also do it to honor our faith. Therefore, Lord, I stand in agreement with the Spirit and I declare that every situation represented here turns into a testimony now. Every situation represented here by the God of heaven turns into a testimony now. Whoever must lose sleep for this prayer to be answered we declare it so whoever must hear instructions from god for this request to be answered we declare it so whoever must be lifted for this prayer to be answered we declare it so Whoever must go down for this prayer to be answered, we declare it so. Father, I cry in your name. Let this not just be a ceremony tonight. Your people have waited. Your people have prayed. Honor the faith of everyone here with strange results in the name of Jesus. There are situations here that need creation. It does not yet exist in the earth realm. We call it from the realm of the spirit to appear in the physical realm. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, there are situations here that only you can solve. Some of them are death sentences. Some of them are issues that relate to life and destiny. We cry to you, O God of heaven, arise tonight and do strange miracles. That by this time, next miracle service, some people will only write to intercede for others. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please keep standing, everybody. Keep standing. I want to pray for you now. Thank you for your patience, but I want to speak over your life and I want you to believe every word. Blessed is she that believes, for unto her there shall be a performance. I prophesy to you number one, doors be open now. Doors be open now. Gates be open now. Gates be open now. Everyone here in ministry, I stretch my hands towards you. The fire, the grace, Shalakatoskia. The unction for a new level. The operation of the gifts of the spirit. The operation of revelatory dimensions. Step into it now in the name of Jesus. Step into it now in the name of Jesus. Let me pray over your finances. This is our year of extraordinary fruitfulness. I stand by the God of heaven and I declare by the power of prophecy supernatural supplies for you. Supernatural supplies by the wisdom of God. Every pit you have found yourself in in the name of Jesus, come out of that pit now. Come out of that pit now. Come out of that pit now. I pray for every family here that has not yet seen the goodness of God in experience this year. I speak to you by the power that raised Christ from the dead. You will return here with strange testimonies. Everything that is yours, but is not yet in your hands. I stand by the God of heaven and by prophecy, wherever it is, I command you to locate your hand and your destiny. I command you to locate your hand and your destiny.
I pray for those trusting God for jobs. Father, you are the one who gives jobs. I declare that between now and the next one month, oh God of heaven, let us have strange testimonies of miracle jobs. Strange testimonies of miracle jobs. I'm praying for everybody but this prayer particularly is for the men the grace that establishes a man that can grant you stability whether financially structurally may that grace please believe it may that grace land on your life now structural establishment in the name of Jesus Christ every dying business in the mighty name of jesus hear the word of the lord i speak by the spirit let it jack back to life now i pray for your prayer life the fire you have not seen from january even up until september the grace to fast the grace to travel wherever you are let it rest upon your life now. I pray for you. Access to the mysteries of the kingdom. The grace that can open a man's eyes to scripture. That you will see. May that grace rest upon you now. Every opportunity that once came to you but was not well utilized and has left you in the name of Jesus and by the mercy of God I stand tonight and I call for a repeat of it a repeat of that opportunity a repeat of that opportunity may God restore time may God restore opportunities in the name of Jesus Christ Every one of your family members that has been grounded for whatever reason in the name of Jesus as you are standing here may the angel of the Lord wherever they are across this nation or around the nations of the world may the angel of the Lord ensure that in this season they are lifted I declare that they are lifted anyone called barren whether biological barrenness, financial barrenness, ministerial barrenness, I speak to you. Be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue. I say it again be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue. Every helper of destiny. That must show up in this season for you to rise wherever they are I cry unto my God who is your God in the name of Jesus may they appear before your destiny hallelujah some of you have been at the same level you have not gone down but you have not gone up either in the name of Jesus this night I push you by prophecy step into the next level help them please step into the next level of your life this is the month of September when a woman is pregnant after nine months she's supposed to give birth and if she does not give birth the doctors have a way of inducing the birth in the name of Jesus everything in the loins of prophecy are located for you to be born in this season I speak to you as a spiritual midwife deliver in the name of Jesus Everybody who spoke evil to the ears of your destiny helper, that people who should lift you 
but because they had an information about you in the name of Jesus by the blood I declare a reconnection I declare a reconnection our time is gone but please believe this these are not empty words they are not empty words at all let me pray for your finances again this is what is squeezing people down squeezing families down people are giving up on God because of tea and bread because of the necessities of life listen koinonia I put a mark of exemption in this season over you hear me I command poverty to leave you like the day leaves the night in the name of Jesus Christ this is the beginning of the ember month where the spirit of death moves upon families people who have labored when it's now time to reap they will say obituary survive by I forbid the earth from receiving your body I forbid the earth from receiving your body listen and for those of you appointed unto death whether for you or your loved ones by the name of Jesus Christ we extend your life in this place I pray for every student here I don't know what may be happening around your academics but if it requires change we change it now if it requires upgrade we upgrade it now if it requires justice we administer justice now if it requires mercy we provoke mercy now and everyone who is in final year here we graduate you in the name of Jesus Christ two more prayers and we're done everything that represents delay stagnation or limited progress the chain that will allow you move but not so far I break that chain now in the name of Jesus. I release you, make progress. I release you, make progress. I release you, make progress. Last prayer point. Listen to me. Honor is better than money. You can have money and not have honor. Honor is better than education. You can be educated and not have honor. The Bible says, and Jabez, not was more anointed, was more honorable than his brethren. The grace that makes for honor, that can pick you out of a crowd and separate you. In the name of Jesus, may that grace rest upon you now. adding one prayer point to my, my, my spirit and we have to pray it and the sons of Issachar that they were men who had understanding of the times listen I want to release grace for discernment it's important to know you can miss seasons just because you are not alive you can they will come back but it will take a long time but I pray for you, the grace for discernment, to know seasons, receive that grace now. Maybe I should add one more prayer point. Some of you are praying, Lord, where do I go from here? Should I travel out of the country? Should I relocate to Abuja? Should I go to Lagos? See? Destiny decisions are never to be taken carelessly. Please hold on, hold on. Relax with this thing. You are praying. Listen, there are destiny decisions in life that you need the help of God. Who to marry? Where to live? 
How many children to give birth to? It looks natural, but it's spiritual. You can give birth to what will fight your blessing. Who to associate with? And Lot went with him. And Jonah went with them. Their experiences were not the same. I pray for you that in the matters of destiny, may the veil, the haziness, let it be torn into pieces tonight. I know a gentleman who had an evangelistic call. Sincere person with an evangelistic call. He went to open a church and he began to struggle to pieces as if God did not send him. No offering, no support, no open door. He was struggling because the pastoral grace was not there. Well intentioned, but no discernment. Again, I pray for you. Whatever you are doing now that is not in the blueprint of your destiny, whether ministerially speaking, business-wise, maritally speaking, I declare a correction now. I declare a correction now. Elijah was asked to wait at Bucheri for a season, not forever. And a raven brought bread, food for him, and he drank from the brook. But a time came when the brook dried. God needed to change strategy. If Elijah did not know he would die there, the same God can help you for 10 years. But by the 11th year, you will change strategy. And if you cannot discern, what bless you before can kill you. I pray for you. The grace to know when to switch. The grace to know when God is saying something else. Receive that grace in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.